Bristol Motor Speedway. Many call this the last greatest coliseum. The Moonshiners Racing League Cup Series calls it tonight's challenge. Here we are, this, uh, Sim Racing Media and the Moonshiners Cup League for 300 laps at Bristol Motor Speedway. We're not under the lights today, but we are under the lights in our time zone. My name is Jonathan Leach. Join, uh, joining me tonight is going to be Jordan with uh, Sim Racing Media, and he is here to help call an excellent race here at Bristol. Jordan, I know you're a, a fan. You're a racer's kind of guy. Uh, thanks for being here with me tonight. Uh, what would you say with a 38-car field, uh, we might see 36 drivers start, what would you say is the keys to success here at Bristol? A uh, big key to success would definitely be keeping your nose clean, uh, keeping the car under you, you know, keeping in uh, control, definitely saving tires, you know, looking for uh, good opportunities to, you know, move up through the field. It's very hard to pass here. Um, I don't think we'll see the kind of tires issues that we did, you know, this past weekend for the uh, IRL NASCAR, but I definitely do think that uh, this concrete will still tear up these tires for sure. Yeah, that's something that's uh, pretty common, I would say, with Bristol, that tires can get, uh, you can wear your tires out quickly. Uh, these drivers have been gritting, and everybody's about prepared to start for the race. It's only going to be a couple pace laps. So, we again, we have 36 cars, it looks like, have gridded for today's race. I'm going to go ahead and go through our running order before we get started. Alex Coffey and Randy Mullins are going to be on row number one, followed by Blaine Wilson and Brandon uh, Bikey. Row number three is made up of uh, Barry Sanders, chief uh, cook and bottle washer here, and Blaine Woodruff. Row four is Chris Spear and Jeff Taylor. Kyle Holden and Chris Davis round out the top ten. Starting 11th is Ryan Huff with Darren Mullins to his outside. Row number seven is Paul Gallimore and Nigel Christensen. Tim Wartman Jr. is 15th. 16th qualifying, Ed Boyles Jr. Row number nine is Chris James and Matt Cox. Row 10, Aaron Matthews. Hunter Carmichael. Paul Whitney and Derek Pemberton make up row number 11 with 12 being Warren Young and Shane Davis. Caden Norfrey, Nicholas Atwood, Nick King, Darren Mills, Johnny Shade, Jameson, Middlemiss. That's going to round out the top 30. Kenny Coppola, a driver who we've seen win this year already, starts 31st. Chad Sullivan, another winner, uh, starting 32nd. Jordan Schmitz, Justin Belmonte, John Binder round to the top 35. And your final driver on the field is going to be Dean Motley. Two drivers not starting. It's going to be Matt Mettler and Jared Clark, who are unable to attend, uh, but they are going to, they did appear for practice tonight. So, Jordan, we've got 36 cars on this racing surface. Lap times are going to be somewhere around uh, 14 and a half seconds. But I, I think staying green and navigating through all the uh, congestion is going to be the keys to winning this race. Oh, absolutely. You know, it's like Bristol's very, very difficult. You know, it's hard to uh, make a run on the bottom here lately. Um, these cars are very, very loose compared to the Gen 6 and, and uh, you know, Xfinity and trucks. Um, they're a little bit of a handful. So, I mean, trying to find any kind of run that you can get down the front or back stretch, you know, making up time on pit road uh anything is key to just getting you that extra couple of seconds ahead of you know the person behind you and you know and the biggest and really survival is a big part of this track a lot of drivers complain about having uh, ankle pain once you get towards the end of these races because you I mean you're using both feet to drive and you're on the gas on the brake on the gas on the brake and it's about that fast that things change while you're on this racing surface. And it, it makes things rather difficult. And you can see drivers now are rolling. It's going to be one pace lap before we get to uh, get to green here. One pace lap. I'm used to short tracks being a couple laps. But in this case, the pace lights are off. And we will be under green for 300 laps shortly. It's worth noticing that we do have two st a couple stages. Stage uh, one is going to be at lap 85. Stage two is 170. Then, of course, we'll finish on lap 300. Uh, and, you know, I imagine, I'm not sure what the pit window is going to look like, but we will figure that out as this race goes on. It may or may not be a factor because uh, cautions could play a role in determining when and how this uh, this race goes. 
and uh, the pace lights on the pace car have turned back on, so we're not quite going back, uh, going to green yet. Waiting for the pace lights to turn off, and it'll be the Alex Coffee Randy Mullen show. We called a, a Bristol race the other day, Jordan, and it really seemed like the high side was where you wanted to be to get your turn in, uh, in through the corners. And, and I was used to you want to be on the low side, but it, it seems like with the new mod tire model, the way the next gen car drives, the high side's a commodity. So it's something to pay yeah, attention to. For sure, yeah, definitely. Um, I know more towards gen four gen six you're running that that low line like you do most tracks you know trying to keep that uh that the quickest line around the track but definitely here lately you know riding that high line trying to keep up the momentum and you know fire off the corners has definitely uh become more of the uh theme here at bristol yeah so you know and we're going to see a lot of that as the pace car is going to turn down pit road race fans get on your feet we're underway here for the moonshiners racing uh, Cup Series as we're into turn number one side by sa side action throughout the field. These guys are never going to be able to spread out, which is the nature of a short track. And you're just going to have to get used to the two wide. And at times, you might even see three wide uh, accidental racing. And you're just going to have to get used to the close quarters in order to survive and be there at the end for this race. Jordan. Absolutely, you know, trying to, uh, you know, manage even lap traffic as we, you know, make some of these runs, you know, some guys up front are definitely faster on speed than the guys in the back. So they're going to be caught relatively quickly here, um, you know, just managing your, uh, your, your runs and making sure you make a, you don't catch somebody in a bad position or, you know, a bad spot on the track and, you know, trying not to uh, get caught up in any of their business and just keep running your line and, and making your moves. Right now we're looking at trouble already as uh, Blaine Wilson and Blaine Woodruff were racing for the fourth place position. Blaine Woodruff and Wilson get together. Woodruff uh, ends up on the inside, makes contact. Actually, not Woodruff. Wilson makes contact with the inside safer barrier and then drops like a rock. He is all the way back now to 32nd. No caution. Heads up driving by the driver of the number 18 as he's going to bring his damaged race car down pit road. And the first caution is going to fly at this time. And Jordan, I know you're, you probably won't be able to see, you won't be able to see the replay here, but we're going to go ahead and pull it up. I'm showing Nigel Christensen involved in the first caution of tonight on lap seven. We're following along with him now. Uh, he's going to make kind of end up being contact with the number 12. The 12 is going to collect the 10 and one other. And the 17 of Christensen is going to get hit a couple more times. So contact with Chris James driving his Ford Mustang leads to the first caution of the evening. We'll be back to racing probably somewhere around lap 11. And uh, at this point, I would say it's definitely too early to consider coming in for any type of fuel or tires. But caution number one here. For the Moonshiners Racing uh, Cup Series. I want to thank all yeah, of our man. fans for being here. Sorry to step on you, Jordan. Uh, we got a bunch of viewers, people rooting for their drivers. Out, uh, We got people rooting for John Binder, Brandon. Um, now I'm being told, last week I was told his name was Bikey. And now I'm being told it's Bakey. So I'm just going to roll with whatever I think's right. Uh, Kelly Coffee's rooting for uh, Coffee and Dig Esports. Couple other drivers rooting for the number, or we got people rooting for the 82. Um, and again, another person rooting for Wilson, who was just involved in contact and coffee. Uh, go ahead, Jordan. Uh, so, you know, all I was going to say is, you know, with that caution there, it's it's definitely going to be a theme of the night. You know, uh, it's not a very large track surface wise. And it just kind of looks like that 17 came off the, you know, the corner and tried to, you know, get a good run and, and fit himself in line and he just didn't have the space there and ended up hooking himself into the wall. And you know, and, and, and that's going to happen. So you're going to have to make heads up moves quickly at a track like this. And if you think you're clear and you're not, that's just going to happen. Uh, ideally you're clear, but you never know. And if you don't make the move, it's too late. Some multiple drivers were involved. Jordan Schmitz, Warren Young, Darren Mills. Uh, they were on pit road uh, Chris James, we were following, come down pit road. He just kind of, a little contact. I think his 
number 12 Mustang is it's probably going to be um, okay considering it's short track racing but uh, Christensen made pretty strong contact with the wall he's back out on track not sure if a fast repair was used trying to look at his machine it, it looks I can't tell for sure by while looking at the number 17 and I believe they do have one fast repair and um, nope the rear end of that machine's awfully messed up so no fast repair used and uh, the 17 is going to be restarting 28th Chris James will restart 32nd perhaps further back as he's been on in his pit stall for 52 53 seconds now yeah, the biggest thing for that 17 is, you know, the damage in Arrow here is not as important as, say, like a Daytona or a Talladega or even, you know, an Atlanta. But uh, the big thing is hoping that, you know, with that nose contact that he didn't, you know, harm that motor at all and, you know, lose any of his power. Because um, that's definitely going to, you know, set him up for a bad night for sure. And as we get back to underway to racing, Randy Mullins is going to take a uh, quick... Uh, lead over Alex Coffey by about four tenths of a second. This was what we saw the other night when we had another Bristol race with the ISNF Cup Series. The lead driver was able to kind of shoot away from the field and then the second place, third place cars would catch him within about a lap. And you see Alex Coffey and uh, Brandon uh, Bakey or Bikey, whichever one it is. I was told different last time. Uh, him also come to the lead and we're already under caution once again. I uh, see uh, maybe Dean Motley was involved, the driver of the number 22. We'll try to go back through our replay footage. Uh, I'm showing John Bender, uh, Nick King, and Warren Young. So we're going to try to focus on John Bender here, the number 33. So following along with the 33 down the back stretch into turn number 3 now. To the outside of the 17. Sounds like the problem's in front of him. He's going to touch this, hit the 16, the 24, and the 19 are involved. So Nick King, let's follow along with Nick King and see what happened to him. Working to the inside of the number 20. Uh, and behind the three, Nick King kind of moves up the racing surface, going into the corner. He's got a lot of speed here. Him and the 19 are going to touch a lot like the the uh, incident we saw with uh, Wilson and Woodruff. And the yeah, 12, so Chris James. It definitely looks like a, a very similar uh, turning themselves off the front nose of the uh, the car on their outside. Definitely looks very similar to uh, the wreck before then. It sure does. And, and, and Blaine Wilson, not the 12. Uh, we saw Blaine Wilson at the tail end of that getting pushed along as well. And so that's going to be uh, caution number two on lap 16 of 300. Uh, as uh, these drivers get more used to the racing surface, I, I do think, and uh, more used to the congestion of all these cars, uh, we're going to start having longer green flag runs. But right now, the jitters are still in. No one's really established a rhythm. And without that rhythm, Bristol is an extremely tough racing surface to drive. And Jordan, I I'm sure you can attest to that same thought. Oh, 100%. You know, I even got out there a little bit, you know, uh, earlier this week and, you know, put in some laps just to kind of get a feel for the car. And, you know, it's, it's, you got to be very easy off, you know, coming off the corners. You want to be, you know, very light on your, uh, on your, you know, getting back to the gas. Um, but you also don't want to get too hard on the brakes in corner entry and, you know, bring that rear end around. Um, and it's just, it's a very treacherous track for sure. You know, I, I think uh, Bristol, you know, personally, it's a lot of fun. Uh, it takes a lot of throttle control. But once you, the rhythm racing does come through and you've found your rhythm, I think it's a lot of fun. Uh, you can make minute adjustments to make your corner and uh, to change your drive off. And it's a fun track. And if you like things that happen quickly, it's the track for you. If if you get a little spooked and you need a couple, like an extra half second to determine what you're going to do, Bristol gets extremely uh, busy. You feel like you're high tasked, a lot of multitasking, and uh, it leads to a lot of mistakes. So it just kind of depends the type of driver you are. And I do like the progressive, uh, the, the not the progressive, but uh, the banking in the corners that you can use to kind of help you turn. 
and it's um it's a unique racing surface the only downside is this is a day race not under the lights we'll take a quick moment uh, Bristol is 0.52 miles long. The track temperature is 100 degrees right now. So I'm certain that it's slippery. And uh, 77 degrees is the outside air temperature as we're about to be back underway for Mullins and Coffee. Pace car turns in back on the throttle. Mullins not getting the jump off the field this time as um, Bakey and Alex Coffey stay with them. Coffee looking now to the inside of the number one in a turn number three and you see the one drift up the surface a bit Blaine Woodruff getting a run now and uh, coffee unable to get the drive off that he needs with the cars to his high side oh there's some contact there with the 71 and 15 coffee's gonna spin come up the track he holds the brake but no one can get around him big damage for Alex coffee and others that's gonna bring out caution number three coffee dropping all the way back to 26 that's uh, really unfortunate for Coffee from driving up front. We're going to go back and just watch this restart once again to show you sort of what happened here. We're going to follow Coffee. And you can see him right here working to the inside of that 71. Blaine Woodruff. A net code. Unless he tried to overcorrect it to stay away from him. We'll have to go on board with him. The 83 is going to... And hit him. Just get yeah, you know, he, he's just in the way. Let's try going on board here and see. We're coming through the corner. I'm curious to see if, if he overcorrects when he notices that Woodruff is to his outside. Nope. Uh, it, just, it, it just looks like he, uh, like you said, net code, the net code there, which sent him to the inside, and he tried all his best to save it, and it just, once it once it was around, it was gone. He was in for a ride. Yeah, that's just, that one's unfortunate for that caution right there. Alex Coffee uh, and others involved in a net code incident right here that's going to really kind of hurt the, the night of the number 15. A handful of other drivers come down pit road. Uh, Blaine Wilson take advantage of another timely caution to give them an opportunity to repair their cars. To, you know, give them a, an opportunity to be a part of this race. And, you know, we're 23 laps in and slowly this field is, you know, it's going to start thinning out the more and more cautions that we have. Looking behind yeah. um, Randy Mullins here, you got a good view of that number one. Uh, Toyota for uh, Brandon Bikey. I like how it says Viper <laughs> just behind him. And, you know, and so we're, we're starting to see some change. Let's talk about Kenny Coppola. I mentioned him on the grid. Uh, he's a race winner this year. He's up 15 positions now to, to 16th. And so the short amount of green flag laps that he's had, he's made quite a bit of headway already on his uh, drive to the front. Justin Belmonte just uh, behind him by a couple positions driving the number six Ford Mustang. He's our current biggest mover up 16 positions. Yeah, these uh, these cautions and definitely some of these cars that are uh, you know putting themselves in, in, in rough spots and getting damage is going to save him, uh, you know, help him move his way up towards the front for sure. We're going to be having a special guest shortly. Um, he'll be ready here in a few moments. I'm not sure if he's ready just yet. Uh, Matt Mettler is going to be joining us in the booth here in the next, uh, we'll call it two minutes. We'll be calling him in to get his thoughts. He put down some laps. He's one of the drivers that was unable to run the full race, uh, unfortunately. But he, he did get some in-lap or in-car perspective for how the uh, these cars are driving. And uh, so he'll be with us in just a minute. We'll hear from him as we're getting ready to go back to green. Coming to lap 26 as the pace car turns in. Wow, the one just does not get a good restart right there at all. It seems like he missed a shift. It's going to open the door for Woodruff on the outside. And Mullins begins to step away, move the 71 into second. The rough restart for uh, Bikey. As they're stacked up right behind him, Chris Spear, Barry Sanders battling for the uh, fifth place position. And uh, and Jordan, you know, 
restarts at Bristol when it comes down to uh, a lot of cautions. Uh, you know, I feel like that's something that you want to get timed in pretty well, especially if you got two, three laps at the end for a green white, a green white checker style finish. Yeah, if you don't get, you know, if you don't get a good start, you're definitely going to be, you know, freight trained. You could easily be, you know, lose three, four spots. And, you know, once you start getting pushed back, people are going to try to go three wide. You know, they're going to, you know, maybe not right now, you know, because it's still very early and only handful of laps into this 300 lap race. Um, but, you know, towards the end of the race, you know, they're definitely going to find reasons to go three wide and, you know, push the push the envelope a little bit. All right, and joining the booth now, Matt Methler, driver of number 89 Toyota, unable to uh, to make this race tonight. He put in some laps. Matt, uh, I know you put some laps in out there. Thanks for joining the booth with us while you still have time. Uh, we always appreciate a special guest. What did you find uh, out on track, and what kind of conditions are these drivers dealing with as we're under caution once again? Yeah, as you mentioned, under caution once again, a lot tighter than I think a lot of the drivers anticipated. That was kind of the norm in the chat. I was playing with the setup a lot, trying to get this thing to just turn. It, it felt like a, uh, a plow truck, to be quite honest with you. And uh, it seemed like the longer you run, it didn't really kind of change. You know, we were looking at the track temp. Obviously, we thought with it being as high as it was, you know, right around that uh, century mark, the car would, you know, normally tr uh, tend to be loose here but that was not the case so these drivers were scrambling trying to figure out how to get these things to rotate now do you think that has something to do with the base setup that was brought to bristol and these guys are just trying to figure out how to fine tune or a couple guys having to make massive adjustments as you see what caused this caution to come out with jordan schmitz darren mills uh making contact with each other what are, what are your thoughts there well, if it was a fixed setup league, then obviously that would be a catalyst, but not the case here. This is open setup, I mean, you got some great setup shop ambassadors here. Uh, Kenny Coppola, uh, Beast Bone Performance, Brandon Bikey. Um, obviously, they're going to be representing uh, Team Watson Racing Setups. Some of these other teams uh, work with Royco. So you have the best in the business, and it seemed to be a common consensus that uh, no matter what speed shop you were working with, the car was a lot tighter uh, than they initially had planned. And, uh, you know, they were trying to figure out what to do uh, last minute to get uh, to get some rotation in this race car. Understood. And, and Jordan, putting you a bit on the spot here, as a driver, you know, what can you do, you know, when you're working with an extremely tight race car and you're trying to build speed? You know, I know you've got a lot of driving experience also, having talked with you multiple times. Uh, what can these drivers try to do to, you know, help get these cars to rotate? You know, you're going to have to work on, you know, uh, you know, finding uh, some, you know, tire pressure changes or even some, you know, uh, spring rebounds and stuff like that. And, you know, trying to, you know, find ways to get the cars, you know, rear end to kind of move a little bit more than it is. Um, you know, you don't want it to, to become too loose because then you're going to be a little out of control. Um, but you don't want it too tight to be plowing as badly as it has been. Um, it's, it, you know, there's a world of different things that we can go over and, and, and change in this car, especially with this new uh, next-gen car. I mean, there is a load of things to do. Well, well, we're under caution. If you have time to to dive into some of that, any one of our... 29 30 viewers right now might be curious to know especially some drivers you know how you could change the different master cylinder sizes if you if you're willing to get into into that topic i'm personally not familiar i don't know if it's something that that you know well but uh, i i'm certain that braking and you know some more rear tire braking might be able to help loosen these cars up but uh matt you experienced something different so i i very well could be wrong uh, what are your thoughts jordan and matt so, I mean, definitely uh, getting a, a little bit more of that rear tire braking, um, getting the rear end, you know, kind of move around um, is a little bit better of a help, but um, it, it can go either way with, with that. Um, I, don't, I don't typically use a ton of brake here just because I usually let off a little more earlier than a lot of people. So, um, you know, I'm not even really hard on the brakes here. Um, I try to let it coast and, you know, do a little bit of trail braking. 
Understood. That's exactly what I was trying to do there out on the racetrack, back the corner up uh, so I could get the car to rotate with, uh, you know, lightly uh, just, you know, resting my foot on the brake pedal, maybe just a little bit of pressure. Oh, is the 71 there gets big time squirrely. What a save. But uh, to his point, he hit the nail right on the head. And that's, and we got a wreck at the point, Jonathan. Oh. Bike, wow, he's still yeah. taking out cars. Yeah, new leader. I think that had to, to do with our leader. And that's going to bring out another caution here tonight uh, or in this afternoon for this uh, race, we might add. Randy Mullins, you know, our race leader. Uh, let, let's kind of try to see what happens to him. Let's try to focus in on the driver, the number 54, who's got speed. Uh, Bikey looking to his outside. Randy Mullins closes the door. Uh, curious to see what happens here. Bikey once again to the outside. Mullins doesn't know he's there. Yeah, once again, it looks like we have a very similar caution to those first two cautions where we had those people, you know, trying to close a door that was, you know, not necessarily able to be shut. And, and that goes right back to everything happens here faster. And with things happening faster, you know, you've just got to be more ready and more on it. And it just keeps your adrenaline up. And, you know, these cautions don't help. You know, if you're getting the 5, 10 laps, like, all right, I'm, I'm up to speed. And then you slow it back down and you get kind of lazy. And then you're back up to speed and you're, you're running. And then we slow it down again. And it kind of messes up the rhythm of this racetrack, I feel, and makes this track uh, ever more difficult to keep up with the rest of the field. And, you know, I'm also curious to know, by the end of this thing, how many drivers do you think we're going to have on the lead lap? So any of you guys that are uh, talking or are in, that are watching this event, let us know. I'm curious to know what your thoughts are. Maybe I'll put a poll up. You think we'll have five, six, maybe two drivers on the lead lap by the end of this one? We're already starting to show numerous drivers a lap down. I think we only have 27 on the lead lap at this point, maybe less than that even. And we're only 42 laps in out of 300. If I remember from last year's race here, uh, Jonathan, I want to say we had about eight or nine cars finishing on the lead lap when all was said and done. Um, but Brandon Bikey, he's going to have his hands full here. Unfortunately, he had the kill shot administered to that uh, TRD racing machine there. We used to call it Hulkamania last year. Kind of looks like a Viper. But as Tony Trapasso would say, Bluetooth right front suspension there. You can see how that tire there is just kicked way out and how it's just leaning over on itself. That could be extended repairs in the pit, not what Brandon Bikey was looking for. No, not at all. It's going to going to help this field out a little bit as we're shortening the drivers. But this just kind of goes to show that the field can change in a heartbeat. Every driver at Bristol is under siege. You know, in iRacing, Bristol is kind of like Dover. When you go to Dover or Darlington for the actual for, for the NASCAR series, they talk about racing that track, and it's extremely difficult, and the, the walls that come out and bite you. Bristol seems to be that way in the iRacing, uh, even more so than Martinsville. You don't seem to have the same level of carnage or impacts at Martinsville as you do at Bristol, and it seems like you have to also drive the track and drive those uh, that are around you, and we're seeing that right now as numerous drivers are lapped down and uh, it is 26 drivers on the lead lap alex coffee in that 15 very damaged toyota is the last car on the lead lap and i'm curious to know if he can make time still um without that front bumper time will tell yeah time will tell green flag back in the air and jonathan before i forget to your point you mentioned you know, things happening faster here at Bristol. This next-gen car, it gets the most flack for what? Not having a lot of horsepower, meaning it's slow. But one of the places this car is actually faster due to that rear independent suspension and that sequential gearbox here at Bristol, it's quicker than, the, than its uh, predecessor. So things are happening fast here. You don't have the visibility, and it happens, at, like you said, in the blink of an eye. So these drivers really have to be on their toes and they are going to battle up front here. And to kind of go off of that a little bit, you know, any kind of hesitation, especially at a track like this, you know, any kind of hesitation, you know, to make a move, 
it, you might as well just not even make it. You might as well, you know, back off and make another run at it or just let whoever's trying to pass you by um, because any kind of hesitation is definitely going to get you into some kind of trouble for sure. Good inside. I appreciate it. It's Kenny Capola's cracked the top 10 and he's trying to crap, crap, crack the top six up 24 spots now for the driver, the number 77. He's won a race. He dominated a couple races ago, did not come home the victor. Um, or no, three races ago dominated, came home as the winner two weeks ago. I believe fell just short last week. And here he is right now up 24 spots in seventh in that number 77. So Coppola moving to the front in a hurry. Fastest lap time of the race so far belongs to Chris Spear. He's ran a 14.59. And everybody on track right now is running around 14.7, 14.8. And Blaine Woodruff just time tied that fastest lap for the number 71 Mustang. Yeah, 14.59. Just as Jonathan was throwing some shade to the other driver there, Chris Spear, Brian Woodruff said, hey, don't forget about me as he continues to carry the torch at the last great Coliseum. Look at some trends of this race, guys. I mean, your, your top two drivers, both up five spots, respectively. That's Woodruff and Spear. Then you have Chris Davis and Paul Gallimore in the 29 and 11. Two veteran drivers that really understand the fundamentals of what it takes to get around here. They possess the key assets. They have the patience, and they understand they need to race the racetrack, not themselves per se, to keep themselves out of harm's way. I look for those two drivers to continue to perform well as Kenny Coppola, Jonathan, as you mentioned, has lit the afterburner, and he has the dial set to kill, is now he's putting Ed Broyles Jr. under siege. And Coppola really showing everybody how it's done here, even in traffic. He's always, he's regularly known as a favorite here in the Moonshiners uh, Racing Cup Series, and he's shown that as we're hearing some contact in front of him. Caution out again, oh, Woodruff, another, another leader. Oh my uh, God! Like there's some uh, of an announcer's uh, curse there with Kenny Capala. Yeah! Wow. When's the last time, Matt and, and Jordan? I know this is a little newer to you, but Matt, when's the last time? Again, thanks for being here. That you've seen two leaders involved in trouble. It, it's been a minute. I uh, I can't believe what I just seen on the uh, live on the uh, racetrack there. Oh, it's, it's the same thing. It keeps happening just like that. How many cautions have Deja we seen vu. just that way where the car on the inside gets touches a car on the outside and gets thrown right up into the track? It happened to Randy Mullins. It's now happened to Woodruff. We saw it happen to, um, oh, man, I'm losing my train. I thought Nigel Christensen. That's... Over and over, this trend is occurring. I mean, they don't call this place the last great Coliseum for nothing. And to your point, we've seen this now three or four times, I want to say, before you brought me in. And Kenny Coppola, just oh, snake bitten there, is he? he got sent hard into that outside retaining wall. And the previous oh, caution, right Brandon there. Mikey. I'm actually happy I cannot see the SRM instant replay because I don't need to see it again. I know he is probably heartbroken, but sometimes that is the madness that is Bristol. Yeah, that was a couple of tough hits. That's going to tear up some more good race cars. So another thing about Bristol, folks, it's not always the best drivers that make it to the end of this one. Bristol is one of those tracks, kind of like Daytona, where if you're the mid middle of the pack guy, super clean, super cautious, you might be there at the end. And we're showing that right now. you got a handful of cars on pit road, 16 cars not uh, pitting. The top nine have not been down pit road yet. But uh, we're, on, we're on lap 60, and um, we're slowly continuing to move forward here today. And just, it's kind of weird seeing this occur again and again. And we have uh, 15... Excuse me, 15 more laps to the end of stage one, which will be on lap 85. You know, I think that just goes to show you how close these cars are on that ragged edge of grip and slip. I mean, as you mentioned, 
just breathing on him, just a slight tap, and it looks like they got hit by a battering ram, the way that the outside car just takes off. And, you know, I, part of that, I think, is the setup struggles, and the other side of that is just the speeds that we're running here in this next-gen car. Do you think the speeds are just faster? I mean, I imagine these cars... I've noticed these cars at Daytona and Talladega, and Jordan, maybe you can attest, are a lot twitchier than the Gen 6 car. Do you think that has something yeah, to, to I, I, I play here? I definitely agree there that it definitely is a little bit more twitchier. Um, yep. I know this, the the steering ratio is a little bit different. It's not necessarily your you know normal twelve to one, you know you know ten to one, sixteen to one. It's uh, a different kind of uh, uh, method. You know, uh, it's uh, steering pinion. Um, so it is a little bit different uh, in the front end of this car. Um, it definitely, you know, sways a, a lot more in traffic, you know, at a Daytona and Talladega. Uh, I, you know, I ran in some uh, big Daytona 500 races, and you know, it uh, it definitely is a lot more on edge is is the best best word to say. And sometimes even at, at, at short tracks like this, it definitely feels like it's kind of on top of the racetrack and not necessarily in the racetrack. Well said right there, and that is 100% what I was feeling out there. Like you're floating on top of the racetrack. You don't have that sense of grip, that car being in the concrete. And as a race car driver, that just, that'll give you fits. You're screaming at your crew, trying to make adjustments. And the other side of that, when you do make contact, you're hanging on for the ride. And unfortunately, that's been the case with some of the big names here in the series. Yeah, and I, I'll even say that you know Bristol has that 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 chance to give you uh, you know that euphoric feeling as you when you know when you have that right drive off, you know when you got the right turn in, and it almost gives you just that euphoric kind of high that you just you're like yes, that's what I want. But it is very quickly to to definitely take that away from you and definitely humble you very quickly. It's like uh, yin and yang, or double-edged sword, you know. Exactly. And one, well said, and I could not agree with him more. Is that Chris Spear now continues to lead here in that seven machine? He carries the torch tonight. Chris Davis still in that second place position, having a strong run there in the twenty-nine. Look who is sneaking into third. The head cook, cook chief and bottle washer of the league, Barry Sanders Jr. in the eighty-eight. As last I knew, he was on a season-plus winless streak. I promise you guys, if he's able to punch through tonight, look out in the interview. He will be absolutely fired up this evening. You know, this goes back to show somebody that doesn't always win every race at Bristol can be there at the end. Bristol serves itself well to the cautious driver who's not overly aggressive who's watching for trouble around him as you see Chris Spear get awfully loose in front of him. That's going to open the door. Sanders to the inside. Spear's going to kind of drive down and, and drive him rough. And look at the 11. Paul Gallimore, aggressive move to the inside. is going to come up and nearly clip the 88. And, you know, and that's kind of what's gotten us into trouble all these times is that aggressive style move by Gallimore, which is contradicting you a little bit, Matt. Uh, making that move right there. But sometimes Bristol gives you that false sense of security that you can really drive into the corners more aggressively than you can. Yeah, and sometimes as a race car driver, what's your job? To go out there, gain as many positions as you can on the racetrack, get all the TV time for all the sponsors, everyone that works behind the scenes, and obviously put your car in victory lane. You know, and I admire that, but sometimes you got to be a game manager especially at this racetrack. Jonathan, what did you always tell me? You can't win it on lap one. You have to survive and be alive. And that's mainly, you know, the, the key takeaway here is what you're saying is we see now the 59 working all over the back of Gallimore is it's getting up close and personal. Yeah, I you know these drivers. Oh, he spins them! Oh, Wow. Caution out again. It's going to be before the end of stage one as well. Uh, I know you saw something that we didn't see. Let's try to see what happens here to the 11. 
Yeah, I apologize for blurting that out there as I just luckily had my camera pointed in the right position. I'm done mentioning driver names tonight. I'm pretty much <laughs> perfect. You definitely are a, uh, a curse for these guys for sure so far. Well, two so for two. Kyle Holden gets into the back of Gallimore. And that just upsets that number 11 machine, causing him to go around. That's going to clean this field up a little bit, get some of these lapped cars out of the way. Uh, the end of the stage is coming, and that almost makes me wonder, 21 cars on the lead lap, do you pit now and then stay out at the end of stage one? Or do you just go ahead and wait till the end of stage one? Matt, I always tell you, you know, do something different than everybody else. But it looks like only a handful of guys that are outside the top 10 are going to make that uh, call and come down pit road to pit. Well, what I learned out there in practice, any opportunity that I have to come put fresh Dr. Feelgoods on my race car, as long as I have enough to get me through the race, I'm going to do it each and every time. Like I said, that car just did not feel right to me. I was very on edge. I did not like the way it was driving, especially after some hard uh, green flag laps on it. So for me, the confidence that I need would probably be to come down pit road. But some of these guys, I mean, some of the best in the business, they can certainly hold on for a while. And that could be why you're seeing, uh, you know, split decisions out there right now with uh, who's staying out and who's coming down. And, you know, when, uh, I, uh, go ahead, Jordan. All right. Uh, I was just going to say it also, I think it's very situational. Um, if you're somebody that, you know, hasn't had a great start to the season, you know, uh, I believe we're what, four races in. If you haven't had a really good start to the season and you find yourself you know um a little up front maybe maybe grab some stage points i, I i've not seen if uh this if these guys here in moonshiners if they have any kind of stage points or anything like that but um definitely getting yourself in a situation that if there is points to grab definitely grabbing them hmm. I, I couldn't speak specifically to that unfortunately myself at this time what I can speak is that we're going to go green for about two laps and then end the stage. And that, I think, is going to be uh, pretty phenomenal. Yeah, it's about to get rowdy. You know how critical these stage points are, especially as competitive as this league is. A little Friday night, old school LCQ style. To end out stage one here in the heart of Tennessee. I agree, Jonathan. This is going to get pretty rowdy. You better strap in, pull those belts tight one more time up there in the booth, bud. Oh, one more time? Like 30 more times. <sighs> but for the end of stage one, then these guys get to breathe a little bit here. 21 drivers on the lead lap. There might be less than that by the <laughs> end of the stage. You know, and it's only three laps away once we get back to green. So Chris Davis, Chris Spear, Justin Belmonte, Barry Sanders, Matt Cox, and some guys bumping each other under caution as they get set. Back underway, the 29 of Davis gets a really good restart, which is not uncharacteristic of what we've been seeing. The racing is really for third as Spear and Cox are going back and forth. Cox with the uh, advantage already coming around. Turn four, that's lap one. A couple more laps now as uh, for till the end of the stage. Barry Sanders moving backwards, unfortunately. Back to six as Kyle Holden starting to make his name known as he's moving into the fourth place position while Davis leads the field by half of a, t half a second coming to lap 85. You know, Jonathan, and just like we said, you know, those restarts are going to be very critical because, I mean, as you can see now, I mean, Chris Spears has fallen all the way back to, you know, fifth place. And, you know, he's under fire to possibly lose a couple more here, you know, before the end of this stage. And there you go. So he's going to end up being in six, holds on to a couple spots. I'm glad you mentioned it. Bill Monty in stage one and second up 32 spots since the start of this one. And then Mustang number six. So stage one complete. Your top five. Chris Davis, Belmonte, uh, uh, Matt Cox, Kyle Holden, Barry Sanders, uh, Chris Spears, Ed Boyles Jr., Aaron Matthews, Hunter Carmichael, Caden Norfrey. It's going to be, that's your top ten. 
And, uh, folks, we're going to take uh, one of our few breaks while these cars are all going to come down pit road. Pit, we'll recap when we get back. And uh, we'll be back in a couple minutes. Thanks for being a part of SRM and the Moonshiners Racing Cup Series here in Bristol. We'll be back. Welcome back live on SRM here at the Great Creek Coliseum as Green Flag back in the air is going to stand on the loud pedal up through the gearbox. Coming into the turns one and two complex, Paul Whitley in that 74 machine has his first taste of the lead here this evening. But it is hot and furious in that second place position. The 32 of Matt Cox applying the pressure now. He's going to peek down to the bottom, eating on the inside. It's door to door side by side. John Ford special off down the back stretch. Check the box. Now Matt L. Cox is going to take that lead from Paul Whitley just as soon as he had gotten it. And Jonathan, look who is behind him now in that third place position. Surgeon coming to the point. The 64 of Darren Mills. Uh, Darren Mullins this time. We got two different Darrens, Mills and Mullins. No big deal there. But uh, 64 of, excuse me, nine spots. First Chevrolet in the field. Uh, fastest time of a 14.68, just about a tenth slower than the fastest lap of the race. 
Uh, showing how to get it done here as the field is spreading out. We only have 19 cars on the lead lap. It's a little bit of action back here with Jeff Taylor in that number 23, but hangs on to it as we're approaching lap 100. As Jonathan said, approaching lap 100 here sooner than later. Look at the move there by Gallimore as he's trying to get back up through the field as he's mired back in traffic now after that most recent incident on the racetrack. You can see where he runs right now. Nicholas Atwood is going to be the next contender up the road from him. Or excuse me, that's going to be Blaine Wilson. Nicholas Atwood currently in that 14th place position. So Gallimore outside the top 10. You know he's going to be hungry to get back that track position. But, Jonathan, you mentioned earlier, in fact, we all did, patience is going to be a big key to finding victory lane. And when drivers get put in this type of position, this is where you really have to have that uh, just that self-reserve and that situational awareness and understanding there's still plenty of laps left on the ticker. Yeah, you know what? I think we're going to start to see some more green flag runs now as the, the field is starting to spread out. you got to remember there's lapped cars that are going to be a lot slower, and they'll be in the way. But uh, now at this point, everybody's just trying to... Those guys are just here to survive and not race. Uh, I think we might see a long green flag run here where tire wear is going to come into play. And there are some drivers that... Um, and one driver, Paul Whitley, who hasn't been on pit lane since lap 59... The everybody else pit on lap 87. So, you know, in about 20 laps, 30 laps, Paul Whitley's really going to be feeling those tires on that number 74. But right now, maybe worn tires are are helping him out. I, I can't imagine, you know, that um, older tires would help that tightness. But perhaps they will somewhat, and maybe the older tires slide a little bit better. I think you could fall into a situation later in the race. Let's say you have 20, 30 laps on your tires, but you have a late caution. It really seemed like the car did not fire off well on fresh Dr. Feelgoods or Goodyear Eagles. It took about three to four laps for those tires to come in. And I think that's why, or partially the reason why you see Paul Whitley uh, able to hang on to that second place position right now. But I can assure you of this, with that deficit, or the offset, I should say, is uh, caution now back on the racetrack, but uh, Matt Alcox has 87, or pitted at lap 87, Whitley lap 59. I can assure you he is running that car, giving it everything he has to maintain those lap times that Cox was running or even in the vicinity before this most recent caution flag is now being displayed over the speedway. Chris Davis involved in this one. Try to watch it again here. Ah, single car, you know, gets out of whack, overcorrects. Kind of big hit there. Oh, and just gets drilled, and a couple others drilled as well. That's rough right there. And I think the car is might have some contact under caution. Shane Davis, Nick King, perhaps. I'm showing that they there might have been a bit of an incident happening with them. That might well, that would make sense as a... Not to cut you off there, Tony Trapasso always used to say, nobody takes a car to the face like Nick King. Really? 100%. Wow. <laughs> and folks, if you guys are kind of new to listening to us, Tony Trapasso was a, uh, a great member of SRM. He fortunately passed away last August, and um, it, it's it's been rough without Tony. You know, we, we all think about him regularly. I miss the talks. And he was one heck of a guy in the booth. And that's that's He's, all there is to say about it. Yeah, that's honestly making it a little bit tougher uh, on me being up here again. You know, sp sir, uh, especially being back, partnered up with you again, Jonathan. I mean, Tony and I looked forward to this each and every week. It was our highlight. We had it circled. And... uh Man, it's, uh, it brings back a lot of memories. Obviously, his legacy lives on, but I'm forever grateful uh, for all the great uh, times him and I got to spend up here in this booth watching these guys right here in primetime put on masterpiece after masterpiece. And uh, I'm thrilled to be back, and thanks for having me. But uh, 
My time is uh, ticking here. I got another broadcast I got to get to. So you guys have a great rest of, have a great call up here, and hopefully I'll see you again real here uh, soon. I'm sorry, I can't even talk right now. I'm choking up so bad. Hopefully I'll get an opportunity to come up here again with y'all soon. Sounds good, Matt. We appreciate your uh, your time spent with us as a special guest. I uh, hope you have a good show, and we'll see you next time, Matt. Thanks for the insight. Thank you, gentlemen. Have a great evening. All right, folks, that's Matt Mettler. He's a uh, longtime broadcaster for this Cup Series. He's spent some time racing with the series. It's always good to get his insight uh, whenever he is available. You can catch him Sunday nights with uh, Dave Regal on the Sunday night uh, NASCAR Cup Series. Uh, those are long races. Makes one heck of a team with him. But Jordan, uh, we're on lap 110 of 300. We're not quite halfway. Race time about 50 minutes already. And uh, there's a bit of a gaggle back here trying to sort the field out. I think they might manage to get it ready. A new driver up front uh, on the, uh, the, I don't want to call it the pole, but on the point for Matt Cox, Paul Whitney. And then once again, another driver that's the control car gets an excellent restart and pulls away by half a second. Yeah, that's definitely going to be a big, big thing. You know, making sure you time yourself out and, you know, Try to keep the other people on their toes and and get a good good fire off. Uh, definitely get yourself some space, get some clean air, and you know, kind of settle yourself down. You know, I, I know me when we have back to back cautions like we did at the beginning of this you know this race, um, I tend to get a little anxious. You know, I I, I want to go, I want to drive, I want to you know get into my rhythm, and it kind of I kind of get in a little bit of a mood. So. Um, being able to fire off in that point spot and you know be able to get yourself in your own rhythm and kind of figure yourself out by yourself uh definitely can you know easily calm yourself down and and get yourself in a, in a right state of mind to make a good run i think it's the inside battle right back here for 10th but uh carmichael and blaine wilson on 115 of 300 Tire starting to get kind of old for these guys. I'm sure they're all thinking there would be an opportunity for a caution to pit anytime the next 20 to 30 laps, but you know that might not happen. We we never really know if that's going to uh, to occur or not. Yeah, so and, like, just... and like Matt said, uh, like Matt said at the beginning of the uh, when he came up here. Um, you know, any chance that I could, you know, get tires if I have them and I know I can, you know, you, you know, space them out well enough, like I'm coming and getting them because, you know, I don't want to be stuck out here. We get a long green flag run and, you know, I happen to stay out and, you know, then I'm screwed. I'm either going to have to pit, you know, under green flag conditions and, you know, go multiple laps down at, at a place like Bristol or, you know, I could end up you know, not even uh, getting a chance to touch those tires, depending on how late in the race it is. And it, it, always a bad feeling when you leave tires available, but sometimes the race just doesn't always run that way. But if there's plenty of cautions, you know, and you leave tires available, you always kind of wonder what could have possibly been. Because in, in eye racing and simulated racing tires are a much larger commodity than they are in IndyCar or in NASCAR when they're really on the surface. You can stay out on old tires and, and fare much better than you could in iRacing where new tires will just kind of eat you up in a hurry. And uh, I'm not really sure what's going on with the model as to why that is, but uh, that's one of the key differences to tires on a real surface versus the simulated surface as we're looking at the number six uh belmonte and chris spear and yellow flags out bender middle miss might be involved trying to see what happened here following bender Oh, there's going to be a single car spin in front of him, and he's going to have nowhere to go. I assume that's middle miss with a single car spin. It is driver of the number 16 Chevrolet. Unfortunate. Going to be the 10th caution tonight. 
So, you know, we, we put a poll up, Jordan, trying to get people's thoughts to see how many cautions we would have, seven or less, but we're past that. Eight to 12, 13 to 17, or 17 or more. Currently, 13 to 17 is the guess, but we're on 10, and we're on lap 125. So, you know, that's starting to sound like if the trend's correct, it's going to be 20 plus. <laughs> we're definitely going to get up there for, for sure. Um, I did want to say, if you go back and look at Jordan Schmitz on that on that turn, the the I don't know how he misses the uh, the 16 there. Uh, he was in that low line, just following behind, and that car broke loose. And I mean, if he didn't, if he touched him, he barely touched him. Well, following along with that four right now, I, I guess we should see that that single car. Right there, wow. Yeah, it's just like the Red Sea parts and he gets around. And you know, Schmitz was in a position where he had no mobility for that uh, four machine of his. In that corner, there, there was nothing he would have really been able to do. And I mean, he was definitely, uh, 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 was it Bender that was behind him? You know, he has to make sure he doesn't get run over there by him either. So the uh, the fact that he was able to get away from from that unscathed is uh you know applaud to him because that that was a, a miracle for sure handful of cars pitting right now uh schmitz being one of them so some of these drivers deciding now is the right time to go down pit road barry sanders pitted last time around so he's running sixth on the freshest tires pitting on lap 107 took some time repaired about 15 seconds of uh, damage as well for the driver the number 88 you can see he's got a little bit of rear end uh, call it crinkle damage on that uh that's rsi button boxes I, I apologize if that's incorrect but you know just it's the nature of this race you know things just kind of happen and you got to do what you can to survive for the for better or worse yeah absolutely and like you said uh, you know we've said multiple times tonight um things happen just so quickly here that like in a split second or even just the blink of an eye uh your night can be ended or changed drastically it sure can All right, so we're getting ready to rack these guys up one more time. Not one more time. <laughs> Numerous more times. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Cox, Chris Spear, Darren Mullins, Belmonte, Ed Boyles, uh, Barry Sanders. That's going to be your top six. Pace car turns down once again. He's getting kind of used to that. Cox is on the throttle, and it's going to step away by about three-tenths of a second. But Darren Mullins wasn't caught sleeping so much. Ed Boyles Jr. in the battles for fourth and fifth with Chris Spear Caden Norfrey side by side through turn three right now getting awfully close uh this time 17 cars remaining on the lead lap but already heard some contact into a wall somewhere around track take our eyes back to that uh battle for third Chris Spear wow a lot of uh congestion right there around that number seven machine the six and the 20 involved uh, everybody stays clean. Coming through three and four. Side-by-side -side action. That 20, Caden Norfrey under siege. Stuck on the high side. A spear is going to get all out of whack right here. It's going to get kind of freight trained on the outside by a handful of drivers. Yeah, and I, I feel like a lot of that has to do with, uh, with, with Cox's restart there. Um, you know, everyone seemed really eager and like they knew exactly when he was going to go. And, oh, it seems we have some trouble off of turn two. Who was that there? I'm going to find out in just a brief moment. Uh, Ed, let's look at Ed Boyles Jr., who was up front, for that matter, around the 64. Uh, running third, looking for third. The 20 of Caden uh, Norfrey right there as well. Now he's just going to get kind of out of whack and bounce off the 20. Wow, narrowly missed by, I think, the 5, the 74 gets a piece of him. 
So Aaron Matthews narrowly missed Ed Boyles Jr. Let's uh, try to go on board with that five as he's going to see things happen in front of him with really nowhere to go. All right, so in the corner, he sees him kind of coming around. Goes as low as he can, and then goes high. You know, there's a lot of luck right there for the five, and Aaron Matthews uh, getting away from that. I don't know how he didn't, you know, get collected in that. Again, it, it just seems like the same thing that happened with Jordan just a, just a few moments ago. Just uh, luck, luck of the draw, was able to get the brakes back down and didn't get run over, and, you know, the seas just kind of parted for him there. And fair enough. Uh, checking some of our drivers on pit road. Kyle Holden been on his pit box for four minutes. Chris Davis for 13 minutes. Two minutes for Woodruff. Almost eight minutes for Paul Gallimore. So drivers trying to get back out on the field with damaged race cars. Everybody's sort of doing what they can. Um, while we're under caution right now, I'm going to try to go back and see some of what happened to a couple of those guys. Then we can find out uh, what happened to the 59. I, I'm sure we talked about it. However, with everything else happening, I just can't say for certain. Definitely, uh, like uh, right before that accident, you know, I was uh, talking about how Matt Cox, you know, had a great launch off and everybody seemed to try to anticipate his restart and, uh, you know, waited a little bit longer in the box before, you know, setting her free. And uh, I feel like it, it definitely caught Chris Spears off off guard. He definitely uh, held up that outside line and got himself, you know, falling back pretty quickly. And I think it just stacked up a lot of cars there and just created a lot of chaos, you know, um, getting everybody bunched up. <laughs> Nature of uh, Bristol, unfortunately. So lap 137, we have a uh, handful of laps still remaining before we get to the end of stage two which is going to be at lap 170. So 40 laps remaining. I'm curious to see if these guys can are going to make it that far before pitting till we get to stage two here at Bristol. And again, the field is starting to thin out quite a bit, I might add. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I mean, that's the nature of uh, Bristol for sure, uh, trying to uh, just survive. Um you know surviving can get you an easy top 15 um if you have some tires you know left late in the run you can make yourself a, a good run for maybe even a top 10 top five i'm trying to see here I'm trying to look into kyle holden in the number 59 but unfortunately i don't have a saved replay as we're back under green cox out front by a Four tenths of a second, Caden Norfrey, Belmonte. Battle, Barry Sanders, and Darren Mullins. That's for fifth. Still seeing extreme aggression as we're three wide right here on lap 140. And that's not going to work as I called it as the seven of Spear is going to get around, reclip the five, and we're under caution again on lap 141. Uh, this is... I think we're going to see less than four cars on the lead lap. We might see less than that survive this race because the the aggression level is just not going down for where we are in this race. Uh, we're not half. We're not even halfway yet, and we're seeing drivers just make moves that I I, I don't feel like they should be made. I'm not in the business of calling drivers out and telling them how they should race. I'm here to call it as I see it. And I'm seeing some extremely aggressive moves. And uh, we, we saw it right there. And we'll put it back on screen. And it results in another wreck. Yeah, I, I just, I think they're trying to get, you know, get or keep their track position. Because, I mean, like we've been talking, it's, it's very important to have good track position at a place like this. It is very hard to pass, um, especially as you get later in the runs. You know, you, your car could either be tight, tighter or looser, depending on your setup and everything like that. Um, so I feel like this is people just trying to hang on to their, you know, track position 
and uh, really causing some calamity and some some chaos in in the in the uh, midst of doing so. And so what what seems to happen right here, you know, is that eighty two kind of makes an aggressive move. Derek Pemberton down makes it three wide. That Chris Spear doesn't have a lot of room, and he kind of tries to go to the high side, which gets him involved or puts him into contact with the five of Aaron Matthews. We'll look at it again right here. This little seven sort of opens the door. Both try to go to the high or go around. Aaron Matthews to the high side. Pemberton's right there. And I'm starting to kind of think of the seven doesn't know he's there. And that's just kind of this, what we see. We've already seen numerous times. Shane Davis in that 79 gets a bit of a piece of it. Uh, that's uh, lap 147. Uh, once again, another caution. Yeah, it seems like we keep getting that, um, you know, people trying to clear themselves on the, you know, on their outside and, you know, with such a, just a little bit of a hesitation or maybe your car's not, you know, you didn't have a good run off the, uh, off the corner as much, as well as you thought you did. And that little bit of hesitation, you know, that door closes almost instantly and, uh, you know, they're turning themselves off the front nose of, of the, the outside car. That's probably the sixth or seventh time that we've seen that kind of wreck bring out the flag here. And, uh, you know, we're under, oh, is it 11 or 12 at this point? I can tell you in just a minute. 12th caution. As you see right there, I mean, not many cars in the lead lap. 13. 13 drivers in the lead lap, and we're not even to the halfway point. So at, at some point, this race is just going to green out, I think, is what's going to happen. And we're going to get a lot yeah, of these definitely. cautions. We're going to have a handful of guys left, and it's just going to go green till the end. Yeah, and, and as we've been preaching this entire, you know, broadcast here, and, you know, every every time we come to Bristol... Uh, just surviving. I mean, you can survive and and get yourself in a good points, you know, point situation, and uh, it's just got to be in the right place, right time. Yeah, right place, right time, indeed. Oh, excuse me. So under green once again, a lot of twitchiness going on. Uh, Belmonte looking to the inside of Caden Norfrey. This is a battle for second, still 30 laps away from the end of, uh, well, 23 laps away from the end of stage one. And caution again. Blaine Wilson. Like, pretty much on the restart. What, what happens to Blaine Wilson here in the 18? Eighteen goes to the high side around the 11. Going to get just tapped by the 11. Just kind of stalls on the racing surface. So tapped by Paul Gallimore. Just just barely tapped by Gallimore here. And, and let's try to watch it from the viewpoint of Gallimore. Gallim, Gallimore. It seems awfully close. I think you definitely got to give a hand to everybody behind that as well. You know, avoiding that 18 just sitting there dead center of that track as well as while he was sliding. Um, good good avoidance there for, for sure for those uh, few cars behind him. Yeah, it's just a little bit of a tap. Alex Coffey, you know, a car with a lot of damage. He's got a front bumper back on there. You know, with all these caution laps, they really allowed this 15 to slowly repair his car over and over and over and over. I mean, and after that hit that he took, and to be to be still in this thing is is outstanding. I I just it's an, a a test testament to how, how how this guy's night's been for sure. <laughs> Yeah, well, we've made the, we've reached the halfway point now, Jordan. Thanks for being here. Uh, Chris Davis says that we should absolutely be calling these guys out. And uh, Jordan, I just said the word absolutely. You've said it a couple times too, but you're new here, and that's okay. I do not like the word absolutely in the broadcast. I kind of think you say absolutely in the absence of a better word. 
and I've said it a couple times <laughs> in the absence of a better word. So it's something that I, I don't like because I, I think it's, you know, it's pointless filler when you don't have anything better to say. So I'm going to absolutely try not to say it anymore. But <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, for, for me, I absolutely think that me saying for sure is, is a, a very difficult thing for me to not say as well. So, <laughs> well, it's, it's just it's similar to people that when they're talking, they use the word like or that or this all the time, every other few words when they're describing things. And it's kind of a crutch or um. When you say, um, uh, lap 32, um, you know, and it, it's just kind of a, a speaking crutch and everybody goes through it. The best radio hosts, the best TV producers, everybody goes through that. And as you become more and more cognizant of it, you get uh, better and you miss that. And, you know, and it, it just takes a lot of time and tool. And, and some people are better than others. Uh, broadcasting, commentating is not my strongest point. I'll tell you that, but I enjoy doing it. I, I love being a part of SRM and uh, getting things done with this group and bringing these leagues and the people that are here watching us um, commenting and saying things and asking us questions. I really appreciate that. And uh, it really does make for a fun evening. So uh, anyhow, here we go. We're getting ready to go back to green. Um, one hour, 10 minutes into, I just did it right there. One hour, 10 minutes into the race. Lap 152 of 300. Green flag is out once again, about 17 laps away till the end of stage two. And Matt Cox there definitely has these restarts timed out perfectly. He knows, It's almost like he knows these people on his outside and behind him on what they believe he's going to do and then he just does the opposite and and pulls away from those those lead cars and that's that's a huge thing because if we have a caution for green white checkered that leader you're not catching him in three laps you're not going to catch him with the way he shoots out uh on the restart you know this is one lap that's two laps complete right now and norfrey is not there and uh, we got another yellow flag out on lap 155. I believe this is 14. Hey, you guys that voted, you can't be changing your votes. I just want you all to know that. <laughs> you, you you made your bed, now lay in it on our voting here. I'm... Oh, I just saw it. Ed Boyles again. Watch the 38. I heard somebody else in the wall, I think. But boils into the corner. You know, without that bumper, a little less down for us. Just kind of gets loose and gets turned around. Yeah, and it also looks like uh, it was Paul Whitley who uh, also scraped the wall, just trying to avoid boils there. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, just just a rough racing surface, not a lot of places to go, and you just you never really know at, at some points, and it's hard to see some of this racing surface also, especially with the makeup of these cars. We'll go on board here with uh, Bender and that A pillar right there. It kind of makes your corner blind. You can only see maybe what a hundred yards, two hundred yards in front of you. Your, your reaction time. You don't have a lot of it in the corners. It's a lot better when you're on the straightaway like we see right here. But in the corners, you can't see very far in front of the machine. Uh, it's almost like you have to have that sixth sense, you know, uh, kind of just sense where a car is and, and, and just kind of have that in the back of your mind. Um, <laughs> there I go with the ums. Uh, but having that sixth sense to kind of know that where everyone is at all times. It's hard to do. And some of these guys have actual spotters. Some of them are running uh, the iRacing spotter. Others are running spotter packs. Uh, and there's a couple other spotter softwares that are, that are okay, but they're not foolproof and they're not perfect. And uh, sometimes that spotter can get you into trouble also. 
Um, but we're getting ready to kind of get back to green, probably around lap 161. It'll be a nine lap shootout to the end of the stage. 13 cars on the lead lap. Chris Spear, Dean Motley, Jordan Schmitz, John Bender, a handful of others no longer on the lead lap. You know, probably without the opportunity to get back on the lead lap either. Because they've been on pit road for a while. Spear is uh, coming off pit road now. Uh, he's only going to be a lap down. Uh, Dean Motley in front of him, he's going to be two laps down. So Spear probably will get back on the lead lap. Motley maybe. But uh, a lot of guys at risk of getting trapped a uh, lap or a couple laps down in this one. I mean, it's it's easy to do here. Uh, I mean, especially under uh, just the green flag situation alone. But you know, under caution with having to fix damage and... You know, trying to add add a full tank of fuel and, and give yourself some four fresh tires, uh, you can easily go a lap down really quickly here. Okay. Matt Cox taken out into the, the lead there, uh, having a great restart as usual. Looks like 88 making a move for second, but falls back in line. Getting a little squirrely back there. Looks like that's the 82 of, of Pemberton. Gonna lose a few spots there. The 88 making some work on the outside of the 20. He's going to look for second. He's going to run that high line. Definitely gets a good run. Takes over second place. And that 20 is going to fall to, uh, to fourth. As the six of Justin Belmonte leaps over him right behind uh, the 88 there. But uh, Matt Cox out front, running away with it a little bit, but looks like he's definitely being run down a little bit by the uh, 88 there of uh, Barry Sanders. Uh, really keeping right there onto his rear bumper, getting a good run uh, into the corner, but not really able to hang on on the corner exit. It seems we have a caution here on the raceway. Try to figure that out. Looks like it was a single car spin. Going into turn one, try to get a look at who that was. Looks like it's uh, Jordan Schmeetz. Schmeetz, sorry. Looks like he uh, came off turn four. Lost a little bit of control and just single car spins it. Like our leader Matt Cox is coming in for pit. The 88 of Barry Sanders coming down as well. Definitely a good time to maybe fill up on some some fuel, maybe get some tires. Uh, I mean, they've been running on them for a pretty pretty while. A good couple of heat cycles on them with these cautions for sure. I think it was around lap 127 was the last time they were, or 107 maybe it was. Um, I wish I had those notes to tell me exactly when they were. But that, again, and you know, into stage two, 
And uh, finally going in towards the end of the stage with very few cars on the lead lap, Jordan. Uh, tell me, were you expecting this to uh, to sort of to go this way? Uh, a little bit. Um, it, it's just the nature of the beast with Bristol. Um, having, you know, a lot of chaos, uh, you know, a short track, you know, people getting, you know, tempers and, and, and short patience. Um making making different decisions you know different tires uh on you know different uh, strategies you know people on old tires people on new tires you know two tires four tires you know there's a bunch of varying different uh strategies going on so i mean it, it's the nature of the beast when you come to a short track like this understood i think uh i also want to mention i believe we're going to be having another guest pop in for this show to uh to help us call the remaining the remaining call it uh, 126 laps here uh of this one for the moonshiners racing cup series it's been a long race so far not a lot of green flag racing uh more of attrition more so than that of racing and speed uh cars taking the wave around getting squared away so they can be prepared and uh get ready to go so uh joining us now in the booth uh, srm's own alan uh, bergen alan nice to have you here uh this race has been uh, a tough one and sort of everything that we would expect with the bristol races we're getting back to go to green i think you've been watching a little bit of it uh did you anticipate uh 15 or 16 plus cautions for a 300 lapper here at bristol And it looks like maybe he can't quite hear us yet. I, I know he's popped in and he's here. But uh, anyhow, back in the green lap 175. The top two um, kind of stretching away from the field. The battle is for third with Belmonte. And look who's back, Jordan. Alex Coffey back at it 140 <laughs> they, laps they later. Gave him, they gave him uh, way too many chances, you know, to, to get that thing repaired for sure. And... and I mean, he's going to, if he can get up there in that, that two spot and maybe he can be the one to take down Matt Cox on, on these restarts. Cause he definitely seems to have those restarts dialed in and just driving away from this, this field. John, you got me. Uh, we do have you now. So now Alan's been to the booth. <laughs> Alan, nice of you to join us. Uh, here we are. We're in stage two. We've had, plenty of cautions in this one only a handful of drivers on the lead lap you know and uh, so we got 13 drivers on the lead lap coffee was wrecked early and has nursed a damaged car on the pit road like 16 times and he's sitting here in fourth just underneath the six of Belmonte on lap 180 uh, is this something you would expect when you come to a, a racetrack like Bristol? Uh, a lot of cautions? Or is that just the nature of a 37-car field? Well, I will tell you this, John. I voted for 17 or more cautions tonight. So, I think we're well on our way to 20-plus. <laughs> uh, well, you know, and it's just kind of nature of the beast, I suppose. And the, these guys are... Again, the field's starting to spread out just a little bit, you know, and as the field spreads out, things get a little bit better on track. I want to take a, a quick mention, you know, some drivers getting back on the field. There's that 59, Kyle Holden. Um, he's 20 laps down, more, more so, like 23-ish laps down or so, running in uh, 28th. We'll know the certainty of his laps down in just a minute. Uh, 25 laps down, but there's plenty of spots that he can gain. There are a handful of drivers in front of him. Jordan Schmitz is one, no longer logging laps, and other drivers that are going to fall out. So uh, some of these guys that are sticking it out to repair their cars, they have an opportunity to uh, to make something happen, uh, even still. So, uh, and and Alan, uh, again, <laughs> thanks for being here. Um, what are your thoughts from this point? With 113 laps remaining, what do you have to do to try to win this race? Survive. 
Survive, survive, survive. Like you said earlier in the broadcast, it's like Daytona. It's, you just gotta hang out there and be there at the end. Understood. Well, we're gonna find out who's gonna be able to survive this one. And uh, we're gonna take our brief moment, step away. Now, you know, I take that back. We're, we're under green flag racing. We'll wait till the next incident before we take another break and step away. As Cox is away now by seven tenths of a second over Barry Sanders in the number 88. You got quite the gaggle of machines back here with Coffee and Belmonte. Coffee with the advantage here. Looks like the 82 of Pemberton, who's up 17 spots, is looking to the inside of that 15. Coffee has fans that are always here week in, week out, so they must be happy seeing that car recover all the way to fourth. He's going to slide up in front of the 82 and very nearly has the same kind of incident he had earlier sliding in front of the 82. I think the 82 cut him a little bit of a break right there. And if I'm coffee, I'm going to, you know, say thank you and maybe not fight too hard, but it's going to happen once again. He's going to slide up and try to slide in front of that 82. Wow. Yes. Yeah, so, so here's the thing, John. I always, you know, as you know, I'm a racer, right? I always say bent sheet metal and hurt feelings, right? So we're going to have bent sheet metal and hurt feelings as we already had hurt feelings, I'm sure. Well, he's had both already. He can't take any more <laughs> if he wants to stay in the top five this time around. It took 160 laps to recover, and he doesn't have 160 laps to recover this time around. And he's starting to fall back a little bit. Maybe kind of sees the writing on the wall here. That it's maybe not be worth overfighting some of these guys at this point of the stage. And, uh, you know, now I was going to say Cox and Sanders pulled away. And now we're under caution again. Looks like Dean Motley. Oh, wow. I wonder what happens right here. He's just out, all out of whack. Misses yeah. pit road. Keeps going. I'm sure he hates that we caught this on the broadcast. So. Oh. Keeps trying to come around. Oh, maybe that that's what caused our caution right there is him missing yeah, pit road. That That's odd. That's odd. No, that's the that's what caused it. We're gonna back this up. So out of turn four for the twenty-two. Just gets loose and ends up into the outside wall, narrowly missing uh, a couple lead lap cars. So under caution once again, folks. Uh, Want to thank you all for being here with us every Wednesday for the Moonshiners Cup Series. Uh, my name's Jonathan. I've got Alan Bergen in the booth now as well as uh, Jordan here. Jordan, thanks for, for jumping in last second with us. Uh, it's been fun so far. i uh, got to take a moment, step away, and we'll be back for um, hopefully some green flag action here at Bristol.
And we are back under green. Looks like Matt Cox still out front, running away with it as, uh, as he has been on these restarts, followed by the 88, uh, Barry Sanders. And uh, just seems uh, seems to be Matt Cox's uh, uh, you know go to right now is you know these restarts and 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 running away with it right now. You know, 14 cars on the lead lap now, Alan. I I really think that maybe this time we're going to get the green flag run. Uh, you know, in the 7 and 19 are telling me otherwise, and so is the 20 with some of these just really aggressive moves right here. And, and look at this, it's just crazy. It's insane. You know, it's like these guys come to Bristol and they forget about respect because this is one of the most respectful leagues I've ever seen. As the 19 is going to dive in here, make it three wide to the inside of that is at uh, 64, Darren Mullins. They're going to survive this time. They didn't survive last time. In front of them, two cars are going to get together uh, in front of this field. Just uh, struggling for... It's like these guys can't get away from each other. Any of no. these guys. So you can run, but you can't hide. I would certainly so like to hide right now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, go for it. You go hide. Well, unfortunately, that's not what uh, they pay me for. <laughs> This might be the longest green flag run of the night, folks. Uh, you, I think you just jinxed it. <laughs> wow. No kidding. Just the same I, way that we keep seeing them. Yeah, it just seems like uh, we keep doing the announcer's jinx tonight for sure. I, I don't think it even is a thing. I think it's just doomed <laughs> to happen. I think we're beyond announcer's jinx. <laughs> We have to keep this entertaining. Uh, it's looking, I, from what I saw, it looked like it's the same style wreck. There it is. Looks like the uh, Nicholas Atwood, uh, Derek Pemberton involved in another one. You know, and Atwood on the lead lap, you know, same way, gets stuck into the wall. You know, I, I feel like it was only a matter of time before Pemberton kind of ended up with the messed up car. He, he kept getting involved in something, and it just got lucky you know it's the other car and now now he's on the short end of the stick uh that's just unfortunate rough night for everybody really uh looks like the leaders are coming down pit road all 10 of them you know and then coming down pit road we're gonna pit here have about 70 laps to go before the end of this one and um you know i think i want to be leading when that inevitable green flag checker comes around Oh, absolutely. You said it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, 17th caution. So if you voted 13 to 17, I was one of those. Uh, we're wrong. Well, we're going to be wrong. Prove me wrong. Oh, 100%. I, I think we're headed towards well over 20 at this point. Hold my beer. <laughs> <laughs> Did somebody say 30? No. Oh. <laughs> that would be just utterly asinine. It's not going to go that, that far. It won't be that bad. I mean, honestly, though, within the <coughs> absence of the cautions, I have seen some really heads-up racing at the same time. I've seen some overly aggressive moves, but at the same time, talented race car drivers that can make those moves are making them and they're putting their their car in position to uh, to gain positions and just i sort of hate it because without the screen flag run you really don't know who's the guy or not and you get ideas and who we thought it was coffee's back to the point for that matter I was, I was um, just about to say that but there's just no green flag run, so tire wear is not really a thing in this race. And uh, I'm certain that some of these drivers came into this thinking, if this turns into a tire wear race, I'm the guy. However, if it's not a tire wear race, I, I don't know if I've got short run speed. 
Yeah, I mean, definitely for right now, uh, from what uh, we've been seeing, and I know I know he's been out front most of this time, so we'll get to see here now uh, that he's back in, uh, I want to say, about seventh place. Uh, Matt Cox has definitely been uh, firing off and, and showing good short run speed, but that was when he was in the lead. So now that he's uh, got a little bit of people in front of him now, um, definitely good to see, you know, if he does have that ability to pass um, and get back to the point before, you know, another caution. And so I'm curious to see now if Alex Coffey being the control car, if he'll shoot out to that three tenths a second lead right away as well over Blaine Wilson to his outside. So back on the throttle here, Coffey with perhaps a little bit of damage doesn't get the same restart that Matt Cox was getting. About two tenths of a second over Blaine Wilson. Just behind them, a gaggle, Hunter Carmichael, Shane Davis, Mullins, two by two by two. And just a big checkup right there for that 64 of Mullins, three wide. Getting around him as a six looks to the inside. Just behind uh, them, you also have Belmonte and Warren Young. That's ninth and tenth side by side. Through three and four down the front stretch. Cross the start finish line. The seven has a big wiggle in turn one. Big wiggle indeed. Definitely here on this uh, restart. Definitely seeing, um, you know, Coffee not really being able to drive out to that uh, that massive distance that you know matt cox was able to and even barry sanders following behind matt cox at the time uh they were really able as the two of them to kind of pull away and separate themselves from this other group as to where you know these front five in front of barry and 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 matt aren't really able to space themselves out very far and so I'm not sure if it's the guys behind them getting better or they're getting slower. I don't think it's that they're getting slower because Coffee's got the best lap of the race at a 14.57, and he just ran it a few laps ago. So I, I think perhaps the rest of the field is just doing a better job staying with them or the drivers that are actually strong have survived to this point, and now you've got some of the better drivers around front uh to the front here as carmichael's looking to the inside he's not going to have the opportunity because blaine woodruff is involved in a caution that brings are involved in something that brings out our 18th caution of the night throwing it on screen now following the 71 of woodruff this kind of gets loose out of the corner and be single car chaos and i take that back the 16 gets a big piece of them Jamison Middlemiss going to collect that 71 of Woodruff. Yeah, it seems like uh, when they're not spinning them uh, themselves off the front nose of, of the outside car, it seems like they're just kind of getting it you know, a little squarely off a corner, and they're either single car wrecking or they're taking someone with them. Yeah, it was hard not to take somebody with you on this racing surface. You know, this, is, this gets awfully tough, you know, with nowhere to go. And as the, again, you know, I've said it a couple of times, as the field thins out, the uh, the racing will get a little longer and it'll go further. Uh, still 13 cars on the lead lap. Nicholas Atwood's a lone car on the lead lap coming down pit road right now. Uh, John Bender, next car, several laps down. Uh, he'll need three, three or four cautions to get his lap back. So I, I think we're going to stay at 13. Doable. It's doable. It's doable. Hope not, but it is doable. I, uh, I would definitely keep an eye here on on Matt Cox. I mean, he's kind of on the apron right now. I don't know if that's just uh, if he's actually looking to come down pit road here or not. Uh, it doesn't seem to be the case, but uh, you know, he he moved up two positions on that restart, um, and I, I think Matt Cox and, and Barry Sanders are the class of the field uh, definitely tonight. You now, um, Barry, I think, has a little bit more stuff to maybe challenge Matt. Um, but if they, if those two get up to the front, I definitely think it's going to be a battle between those two for sure. Alan? The, you know what? I've been watching this race, and I really miss the dirt. <laughs> I need to put the dirt back on there. I think the racing was way better than the dirt. I don't know. That's maybe it's because I'm a dirt guy. Yeah, it's, you're one of those weird dirt track people. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, John, you still owe me a dirt race. Oh, uh, what? From what? What February. did I? 
What did I lose? How did that happen? Um, we had 43 viewers at the Daytona uh, 500. Oh, you're race right. Elite. You're right. So, we're going to pick you a dirt race. Uh, can it be in, like, <laughs> Legends cars? Is that an option? I mean, maybe. Maybe, like, we're gonna, go we're gonna let We're going to let uh, Facebook, or we're going to let YouTube decide it. We're going to put up on a poll for, you know, it. We're, like, we're going to put a poll up at the next, at the next big event that we uh, broadcast for, for said league that this happened in. And we're going to let YouTube decide it. But it has to be on iRacing, though. So Legends is on the table. Legends of Cars are on the table. <laughs> huh. At any rate, we're going. To, we're getting ready to go back to green with Hunter Carmichael on the inside, and Alex Coffey's going to take off through the Geico Restart Zone, and we are down and away. Alex Coffey jumped out to that early lead, and he is taking 18 car with him. Yeah, he, he seems to fire off, but, I mean, it's just not as, as much as we've seen some of these other guys be able to do. And and to Jonathan's point, I mean, he was in an, uh, a very early accident. Definitely, you know, might still have some sort of little bit of damage, maybe a little bit of arrow. I mean, it's not as big here. It's such a short track. But, uh, I mean, he's just not firing off as, as much as we saw Matt Cox do time and time again. It's just so hard to get into a rhythm when... You got 13 or more cautions. I think we're up to like 13, 14, maybe 15 cautions. Let's uh, so hope to get to a rhythm. And so a lot of times too, Jared and John is, is, is in the next gen cars, you got the fifth gear, but do you really need it? You know, yeah, one of those it's some tracks you see them even, you know, downshifting in the into, uh, you know, fourth or or third even, and to get that little bit of drive off the corner, and you know, even help it turn a little bit for sure. Yeah, I definitely do like the fifth gear as a passing gear, but on the short tracks, I'm usually a fourth gear kind of guy. Yeah, it's definitely nice to have that, you know, at, at a place like Bristol, having that fifth gear um, to, to pull you along a little bit, give you a little extra boost, um, and, and, you know, maybe give yourself that run as looks like uh, Barry Sanders is going to go off track and gets absolutely demolished. <laughs> Boy, that 88 car is in a world of hurt right now. That looks like an asphalt modifier. That, that is a trip to the care center with zero doubt the virtual care center For, i don't know i mean if, if he's in vr or something like that it might be a real care center for sure <laughs> you know it's funny you mentioned that you know to the care center because i so look i run a lot of force feedback on my wheel so whenever i spin out or hit a wall i have to let go yeah, I mean, it's just like the real cars in it that we see on Sunday. You know, those things will snap around on you in a heartbeat and break a wrist. Oh, man, he gets hard to the wall. Oh, the 23 car comes in there and gets a piece yeah. of it. I mean, he goes man. airborne. Oh, that was nasty. That was a nasty look there at the end. And I mean, it doesn't even, uh, it I doesn't look like there was a ton of contact, really. I mean, it doesn't. No. It's almost like he, take a look here. I mean, like, there's a little, but I almost wonder if he just kind of overcorrected trying to stay off the uh, the 32 and, uh, the, I believe, the 3 there. I think you're right. But nonetheless, we are back under caution. And I'm glad I took the over on that poll that John put up earlier. Alex Coffey is at the top of the pile in that number 15 car. Mm. Yeah, I definitely would have lost my money on that bet for sure. I uh, I put it for the 13 to 17, and we are definitely past that now. I will tell you this, though. There's more cars on the lead lap in this race than there was on the actual race. 
on Sunday, so we got that going for us. Yeah, I mean, at least we're not having the tire problems like we were in 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 the race on Sunday. You know, people blowing blowing tires after short runs, and you know, just absolutely shredding those tires to pieces. At least here with this tire model, that's you know, in the virtual virtual world, we uh, we aren't seeing tires shredded to pieces. No, but my heart's getting shredded to pieces with all these caution flags that we got going on. <laughs> absolutely and i mean oh jonathan's favorite word absolutely uh looks like matt cox is going to be on the outside and uh, i think this is going to serve him well here on this 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 uh restart i think uh the 18 is going to get a good jump he's you know definitely got more power than than coffee um, but with coffee being the control car gets ahead of him. And I think, I think he's going to definitely push the envelope to get back to that lead spot and, uh, continue to, you know, have those good restarts that he's been having. So the two other thing too, is Jordan, as we get ready to go back to green, the iRacing.com pace car lights are out. We can work our way down the back straight away. Um, we could see a long green flag run. We got a little over 60 laps to go. We got 60 laps to go, actually. As they, as the field brings the, as the pace car brings the field down to turn number four. And we are getting ready to go back to green. Jordan, get ready. Buckle in. 60 laps to go. We're coming back to the green with 59 laps to go. Here we go. Green flag. Coffee gets the jump. And we are green flag racing. And it looks like Matt was definitely looking on the outside there off that run, uh, off that restart. And uh, it looks like he's going to go to the inside of the 18 here. And, and he, I definitely think he's hungry to get to that spot. Uh, but he's definitely being a little bit smart about it, uh, not pushing you know, his nose into a spot that he shouldn't. Um, but I can tell that he is very eager to get himself back out front and, and lead this thing back to the uh, checkered flag. Right now, you're looking at the 32 car of Matt Cox. He's working his way on the inside there of the 18 of Blaine Wilson. He's running third. He's trying to get up two spots better by the end of this race. But he's been real solid. I've been watching that car while, we, while we've been away here. And while you've had Mettler up here, 32 cars, in my opinion, is going to be the car to be here in the later stages of this race. Yeah, and I think if he can get a good good uh, green flag run here, he can definitely give himself a, a good rhythm, find you know get back into his you know mindset of running this car, and and pick these two off here in the next couple of laps, if not you know just a lap or two, because uh, he's pushing the envelope pretty hard here, uh, looking to the inside of the 18, and then you know as the 18 goes around the outside of the 15 here, he's going to follow him through. Well, as you mentioned that, we're looking at Darren Mullins, and he's battling Shane Davis there in that 79 car for a eighth position, as it were. And he's got that, looks like the number 23, that's a beer can sponsor car, Budweiser car. And, you know, he's riding back there. That's Jeff Taylor. But he, now Darren Mullins is working on Hunter Carmichael there in that number three car. I think you guys are doing great. Well, that's all I'm going to say. I'm just sitting back and enjoying the show right now. That's fine, but we got a car get try to got loose there. That was the seven car. Chris Spear got a little sideways and had to check your shorts moment. <laughs> okay. Nonetheless. You think he's wearing his brown pants today? I mean, he better <laughs> might want to go check his shorts after this one. But he's going to try to do it again as he's working underneath that 23 car. Darren Mullins there, though, in the 64 and he's got a mirror full to 83 car there, it looks like. Looks like 83 there behind him. And this is a battle for essentially eighth position, Jordan. Alex Coffey falls back to fourth position after leading a handful of laps. And this one, Matt Cox moves up to P2. After battling hard to get to third, and he's battling, he's all over Blaine Wilson. He's on Blaine Wilson like 
Uncle Ben is on rice right now. Yeah, and I, I just I don't think Alex Coffee's car really has the power to uh, to keep up anymore. Uh, you know, like like he was uh, in that early Clear incident. Contact. Sorry to cut you off. Clear to contact. I was very close there for sure. Uh, we've seen numerous amounts of people turn themselves into the wall, and uh, it seems like he's trying to shove him off the track. But uh, like I said, if Matt Cox can get around and clear himself past that 18, I have no doubts that he will be hard to track down because once he's in that clean air and out front, he is pulling away as there's caution on the racetrack. Man, it was getting good too. Oh, I, that, I really wanted to see that play out because that was a, that's probably one of the closest battles we've had all night. You're not wrong. As we have a little over 40 laps to go, or 43-ish to go, maybe 44. I'm not. Look, we're doing St. Louis math here. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and we are watching pit stops right now as we're watch watching Matt Cox there. We're going to put Shane Davis there. He's running third right now at the caution, the side of the caution, anyhow. So, Jordan, here's, here's what I'm seeing so far. As we are, you know, a little over with... 41 laps or 42 laps away from the end here. And man, I got to tell you, it's been a fun, fun race so far. I'm having a, I'm having a blast. And, you know, we got the 83 car. I believe the 83 is Tim Wortman Jr. He is some laps down, but boy, is he trying hard. I mean, I mean, there's a possibility of him getting them laps back at this point. Um, I mean, there's been a lot of chaos and calamity for for the entire night. So, I mean, he could end up being in, you know, the top 10, maybe even the top five by the end of this thing. I mean, it's all about survival, my friend. It's Welcome to about... Bristol. Welcome to Bristol. It's Bristol, baby, right? <laughs> Amen. We're going to watch... Uh... We're gonna look at Blaine Wilson there as he's gonna get his spot back. They're gonna get him back in the line. So we get ready to go green here. So we're gonna come back to green with 41 laps to, or 40, no, 39 laps to go. Sorry. 39 laps to go. So we're having a 39 lap shootout. This is your short track racing. Saturday night shootout right now, right? Absolutely. It looks like <laughs> uh, Matt Cox, it looks like he made a second trip down pit lane. He's going to be at the tail end of the field for this restart. So all that work that he did to get back to that P2 spot, looks like that's all gone now. I think he can come back. I mean, with being only the 12th car with, you know, in this in this field i don't, I don't think it's going to be a problem i just i know bristol has a tendency to be a very hard place to uh to pass um without using the bumper and here tonight <laughs> here tonight there's been a lot of that and uh i feel like anytime he's going to get some momentum it, it's just it, it might be shut down by a caution well here we go back to green jane davis alex coffee gets the jump lane wilson did not take off, and we are. Oh, we're spinning out! Holy oh cow! My. Shane Davis in the seventy-nine car. Tough. It's wrecking. We got a pile up. It's a big one. The little big one here at Bristol. We got a and pile of high forty. Want to know who survived? The man that we were just talking about, who uh, I thought was going to have a bunch of trouble. Uh, Matt Cox wasn't anywhere near that. Matt Cox did survive that one. Let's go back. 
Let's see here. Well, I don't I don't think a replay is warranted on that one because well, you know what? He uh we just saw it all in full. <laughs> Man, what a wreck that was. Let's yeah, see. well, I mean, right on the restart, everybody's right there tight knit, you know, close together, and it just at a small track like let's, Bristol, there's absolutely nowhere to go. So let's take a look here as we get ready to come back to And I want to go back to Shane Davis. I want to go back to that 79 car. Where is where he is? Shane Davis, where are you, buddy? There he is. I'm going to back this up a little bit. All right. There. Okay, here we go. Back. I may be on the wrong lap there, which is my bad. So we're gonna, we're gonna kick it back. Oh, that, that was the end of the pile up there. Nonetheless, wow, that was a huge wreck. Yeah, it just kind of looks like uh, you know Alex Coffey drifts up a little bit. Maybe got in the corner a little too hard. Uh, you know, it's hard to tell uh, with you know just being on a restart. Maybe. Lost it a little bit going into the corner, uh, gets into the 79, and, and then that, that's all she wrote. Everything just starts stacking up behind them, and, you know, it with a small track like Bristol, I mean, there is absolutely nowhere for anyone to go. So so here's your top 10 right now, right? So you got Blaine Wilson, you got Justin Belmonte, Jeff Taylor, Caden Norfrey, Jeff Taylor, Darren Mullins, Matt Cox is back up there in sixth position. As you yep. said before, he he went to the pit, had an extended stay in at, at the pit road, was at the tail end of the longest line, and now he's battling up there in sixth. Seventh is Nicholas Atwood. Chris Spear is eighth. He's been caught up in some incidents. And then now we're getting back to Shane Davis, who, by the way, got put into the wall earlier on you know just on that restart so we're gonna go back up here to the front here and let's do this let's bring up the dashboard if we can maybe not anyways so we're getting ready to go back to green right the green flag we're going here we are coming back to green here Lap 267, Blaine Wilson on the button, and we are down and away, and the inside line did not take off. Not at all, and that allowed Matt Cox to get a great, great jump. The 20 got a good jump, and they're just following in suit behind that number 18 car. Now it's time to follow the leader there, Mr. Jordan, as we are, as we might get that green flag run finally. <laughs> It's very possible, and a little tight there with the 32 and the 20, but Matt Cox moving up into second, not quite clear there, but now he's clear. Going to do a little bit of a slide job to get in front of that car, and he's going to run down this leader. He is. Here he goes. He's making a move. He's going to spin. move the leader. Oh, he just moved Blaine Wilson out of the way. He said, I want this lead back. I've had it all night. It's mine, and he's going to take it. He did. He not already, only did he already did under it. fire though by the uh, the six and the twenty there, but uh, I think once he gets back into a rhythm, I think he's going to check out and he's going to say, "I'll see you all next week." This is my favorite view: the onboard, the nose cam right here. Ooh, mm -hmm. as it, we're on the inside here, we're looking at Justin Belmonte. Look at this shot. Here is you can see how bumpy this concrete surface is. Remember, they ran dirt on this for three years. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's really good to see it back Ooh, on the concrete for sure, in my opinion. I, 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 we do have another caution. Sorry to uh, 
do that to you, but let's see, let's do this one, and we'll back that up. Okay, here we go. This is Ryan Woodruff. Oh, he just gets loose coming off the corner. Man, what a what a tough break for Brian Woodruff as we come back to the yeah, front of the field. Off, gets loose off the corner and just you know gets to the rear end of the twenty two there. So now Matt Cox is now your leader again. And we are on lap 276. Probably 277, actually. Well, we've got 25 laps to go. 24. And like I've been saying for just about every restart, <laughs> he's going to fire off. And, I mean, with someone like, uh, you know, Coffee on his outside who doesn't have a lot of power, um, definitely, definitely under power compared to, to the cars around him. I think he's just going to, you know, trail off and he's just going to hope this thing goes green for the next, you know, 24, 23 laps. And, uh, you know, he's going to check out and say, I'll see you all at Coda. <laughs> Coda? Yeah, Circuit of the Americas is their next race here on Moonshiners Racing League as they're going to go road course racing next Wednesday night. Um, you could catch myself. And John, tomorrow night on Racers Leap, as we are going to be racing tomorrow night. But for right now, we're going to finish this one out here at Bristol here for, like I said, the Moonshiners Racing Elite. Myself, I am Alan Bergen. With me is Jordan. Jordan, I don't know your last name. I do apologize. I'm horrible with okay. names. So, but anyways... I'm having a lot of fun. I know you're having a lot of fun. And it, it's been a big old time. It looks like I, uh, Alex Coffey is actually going to bring it down pit road here. So he's going to surrender second place to come down pit road. That's a tough, tough break for Alex Coffey there. Yeah, but the so. good news, 11 cars on the lead lap. So, I mean, he's not going to have he's not going to be very far. You know, and and he's just definitely probably going to hang out and hope that there's some some openings that he can just sneak through some windows and maybe catch a, a good caution, get himself back, you know, within the top five. Well, you're not wrong. And and here's the thing. Here's the storyline that I'm watching right now. 22 laps to go. 21 laps to go. Does Alex or does Matt Cox hold on or does, you know, Justin Belmonte sneak in there and steal one. You know, that, I, that's I what that's what I'm waiting for. I think a lot's going to be said on on this restart for sure. Um, it's 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 getting down to where these restarts are going to be very very important. Whether this is the last one or just the first of many here in the next you know 21 laps, it's going to be a a big thing as he gets to a big jump like he has been all night every restart i mean he just moves within like eight eight car lengths right off the beginning well here we go 20 laps to go and matt cox takes off like uh jordan just said but here comes the budweiser car of jeff taylor at the toyota there we're gonna Man. come back through the field just a little bit more and it looks like nicholas atwood has crashed Looks like a three car incident there. And we are going to come back to the replay. Let's back it up here and see what happened. We're watching Nicholas Atwood. And oh, the take car comes up and gets him. And we yeah, are... it, it looked like a good good bit of net code there, and uh, sends yeah. that night. Home. Man, oh man, oh man! 
That is a tough, tough break for Nick Atwood. And hey, look, so you know, I on you know when you're watching this on YouTube, you know, I'm so I'm new at this whole you know doing two things at once deal. So when you see me back it up, it's not intentional. It's because you know I'm still learning. <laughs> <laughs> we digress. <laughs> oh, yeah. So we got 17 laps to go. Matt Cox, we had to. Oh my gosh, he's been the star, star so far. Um, Nicholas Atwood was involved in that crash. We are up yeah, here. In, something right. off of what Jonathan said earlier, you know, no one can touch him you know, for at least a handful of laps. And so if we get into a situation where we're we're going to green-white checkers, two laps is not enough to run him down, especially with how far he gets out in front with these restarts. I mean, he, he gets anywhere from five to six, maybe even seven car lengths <laughs> before they're, you know, coming out of turn two. And, I mean, he's just, he's got them dialed in it's like he's in the other racers heads he knows like what they think he's going to do and he just does the complete opposite and just leaves them in the dust so look we're gonna have a 14 lap shootout to the end right when we come back to green might might even so now is the time now is the time you really gotta go we really gotta get going here you know it's been a long race i missed the first 150 miles the other commitment, which was just fine, but I'm glad I got to do the last hundred so miles. You know, of this race, 300 miles. 300 miles could be a long way on on a, a Bristol or even a Martinsville. So, you know, when we come back here, we have 14 laps to go here. As you are looking high above the last great Coliseum, you know, last the last three years have been dirt. This year they go back to concrete. What do you think the adjustment is after running dirt for three years and then coming back to concrete? I mean, I think it's a completely different beast. I mean, dirt dirt is very treacherous. I mean, between, you know, the tracks slicking up as runs go on, you've got to deal with dust and, and, and particles flying in your face, you know, even though they're in a fully, fully sealed car, you know, with like a, just like a window net opening, you're still dealing with all that dust and debris. So I definitely think it's a little bit easier for the average racer. Um, but it's still a tough place to be. And it definitely for sure, as we go back green and Matt Cox gets another big run off into the turn one, um, it definitely has been very treacherous and hard for these guys to deal with tonight. Right now, Matt Cox is out to almost a half second lead over Jeff Taylor. But here comes Justin Belmonte on the inside, the 23 car. Jeff Taylor, he's going to work the outside. And these guys are ripping the lip right now. And, that, and everything that's happening right now behind Matt is exactly what he wants to see. He wants to see, you know, second and third, you know, fighting amongst themselves, you know, maybe them slipping up, getting each other a little loose, stacking up the field, you know, getting giving Matt a chance to, you know, run away even further than he already is. And, I mean, that's what he wants to see. He doesn't want to see them get into a rhythm to where they can, you know, make some good lap times and run him down. I haven't seen anyone really since, uh, you know, Barry Sanders in, in a couple of runs earlier. I haven't seen anyone really be able to run him down. But as time moves on, I definitely have seen where these cars start equalizing and some people may be having a little bit better of a run than him. But as far as the short run, uh, he's just unmatched. Oh, yeah. Matt, Matt Cox is a beast right now. All right. So... Now, right now, as we're watching Matt Cox, we are going to bring in Matt Mettler to the booth. Matt, are you there? Gentlemen, I had to come back to this race. I couldn't stop thinking about it even in my broadcast. I'm not going to lie. The way this thing started, I, ca I caught myself peeking in on, into the coverage from time to time. I had to come back. So thank you for having me here for the finish. Matt, you know, I'm glad, I'm glad you're here. I have never got to work with you, so this is a first for me, too. I'm making history right here. But right now, we're watching Justin Belmonte make history. And 
Yeah, you were here for the first hundred so miles. What was your impression on the first half of the race? Absolutely wild, and Hollywood could not script the way that those laps unfolded. You know, it seemed like, uh, you know, the leader was a ticking time bomb with certain death uh, guaranteed at one point in time or another, almost like final destination to the greats in the series. You know, Brandon Bikey, uh, Chris, you know, uh, Kenny Coppola in the 77. Uh, and then as the race went further, uh, the 74 also got caught in a similar situation as that car was smoked and destroyed. And now, as Jonathan Leach was saying earlier, you know, one of these guys that you wouldn't think may end up winning this race because they survived and they uh, rode out the storm and they're here at the end. But Matt Cox in that 32 machine, he is on another planet right now. You know, as you guys advertise, he's going to just check out a Dodge on this restart. And that's exactly what he did is he's enjoying now almost a nine tenths of a second advantage over the six of Belmonte, but up 32 positions. Are you kidding me? No, we're not kidding you. <laughs> it looks like we're under caution once again. And I don't know what happened. Oh, that was... Yep, that's the end of the that's race. That's the end of the race. Holy cow. Things happen so fast on here. Well, it was... And like I said, you know, once, once Matt Cox got out front and, you know, was able to... Uh, you know, get back control of that lead. He just checks out on those restarts, and he just, you know, could not be caught. Well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and talk to our top three here. That may have been the fastest 15 laps I've ever seen in my life. It definitely also has a chance to have been our longest green flag run of the night. You're not wrong about that. You are definitely not wrong about that. I'm not sure what happened to the 32 there, Matt Cox, but he looks like Terry Labonte after he uh, he won here back in the 90s and then destroyed his race car at the other end of the track. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't matter now. He's already claimed the the checkered flag here. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go. We're gonna give Matt Cox first in the booth. Third, Matt. This is Alan. Matt. Hey, Alan. And Jordan in the SRM booth. How are you doing tonight? Oh, I'm tired. I'm tired. Very tired. <laughs> <laughs> you look tired. Like, so you just drove away with that for the last 10 laps. What was, what was the strategy? Was that the strategy to, you know, to just be there at the end? Uh, the strategy was to get to the front and, and stay in the front. Um, got behind a little bit in pit strategy there. And then, um, I actually smoked the wall pretty good with like 30 to go and got a lot of right front damage. So I was just trying to go as hard as I could for as long as I could and hopefully win. And it worked. Yeah, you got to be tired. So I, I, this is my first time watching you guys on Bristol. Did you guys run dirt? And if you did, what's the, what's been the biggest adjustment for running dirt and coming back to, to the concrete surface? Yeah, um, I actually, this is my first um, a year in the league, but they I know they did run dirt last year. Um, I don't know. I'm it, Obviously, completely different track when it's covered in dirt. Um, I'm glad it's not in dirt. I'll just say that. <laughs> yeah, I think you might be with the uh, consensus on that. Uh, Matt, before we get you out of here, is there anybody that you would like to think to help get you here tonight? Yeah, just everybody uh, on the team, on the, the BMP team. It's always fun racing with those guys. Um, uh, basically, everybody that puts the league on and all the admins. It's pretty fun so far, and, and hopefully we can get some more wins. All right, Matt. Well, we're going to get you out of here and let you celebrate with your team. And it was fun calling those last, uh, you know, 20, 30 laps with you in, the, in, in contention. So go celebrate your team, and we'll see you on the next one. Yep, hopefully we have fewer yellows in the next one. But yeah, thank you. <laughs> Four.
<laughs> well, there he is, ladies and gentlemen, burning the house down once again as Matt Elcox, the newcomer, comes up here to the last great Coliseum and wins the jousting match here in primetime. What a statement win for the 32. I couldn't agree more. But right now, we're going to have Justin Belmonte and Matt Mettler. We'll let you talk to him. Hey, Justin, Matt and the gang up in the SRM booth. You got to copy, my man. Yes, sir. How's it going, guys? Hey, it's going great. Also, deja vu all over again. Happy to be interviewing you up in the SRM booth once again. Here we are back at Bristol, and you always seem to find your way to the front of these things at the end of the night. You came up just a little bit short, but talk to me about your drive tonight. That race was treacherous. It was action-packed. And how did you gain 32 spots out there? Uh, all the all those wrecking cars, I snuck by them somehow. I got kind of lucky early on, um, dodging all those wrecks. I'm hungry. I'm a little tired. That was a brutal one. I was just <laughs> happy to be done at the end, I think. I'm glad I got second from, from Jeff there. That was a good little battle at the end, a little bit of green flag fun we could have but um pretty good finish i mean i got pretty good points the whole night that was nice after the had a little rough start here so it's good to uh bounce back i mean i'll be honest with you i joined them in the booth for the first hundred laps and i was so mesmerized and perplexed i had to come back to see the finish of this one after i took care of my broadcast obligations you mentioned that battle with jeff taylor in the 23 um I mean, that was a great old-fashioned Bristol battle, if you ask me. Looked like Earnhardt and Labonte back in the 90s. Anything maybe you could have did a little bit different there? You think if you were able to clear him sooner, you had anything at all for the 32? Or did the best car win the race tonight? No, I think I definitely had him. We, we, were, uh, we were battling pretty good early on. And uh, we had a, good, a better long-run car than we did a short-run car. And that kind of that, that wasn't really a thing, so... <laughs> but um, I th I think we could have had a chance. I don't know if we would have got to him. It's really, really so hard to pass. It was so hard to pass. Um, maybe, but I don't. It would have been really close. I think he still would have had it. There wasn't enough time left to get by both of them. It would have had to happen really quick, and uh, it just didn't. So it's, I'll take a second though. Not bad. Heck yeah, man! That was one drive from you. I mean. Coming from another zip code, if you ask me, and like you said, you had to, you know, the party of the Red Seas to miss all those wrecks, and here you are in second place here tonight. Great point stay for you. Before we cut you loose, who helps you get it done on the six? Uh, we got Team Watson and Warrior Racing helping out. Kenny's always giving us good setup, and um, if I could figure out how to qualify, that'd probably be pretty helpful. Maybe I'll figure it out one day. Well, there he is, ladies and gentlemen, still flexing the muscle, king of the long run in the series. If you ask me, Justin Belmonte never disappoints. He comes up here just a little bit short in that second place position. Alan, back to you, bud. All right. Thank you, Justin, for taking the time out to talk to us. And Jordan, we're going to put you on the spot next with Jeffrey Taylor. What's going on? How you doing, Jeffrey? I'm just, I'm ready for bed. That's what I'm doing. I'm wore out after this thing. <laughs> I hear you. A lot of cautions, a lot of, a lot of time pacing for sure. Uh, you were able to keep yourself up front for most of the night. Um, but I do recall like a, a very big incident with Barry Sanders. Um, you, you know, ran into a, the back of him and uh, what, how did that affect your car and how, how were you able to, you know, come back from that? It didn't change a thing. I, I was wondering the same thing, whether it was net code or what. Like, I'm not sure. I didn't get any damage from it in my world. Um, well, it certainly surprises me for sure, because, I, I mean, that man was sent to the infield care center as soon as you were finished. <laughs> <with him>. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he was. He was in bad shape, man. It, I, I, was, I seen him flipping in the mirror, it seemed like. Yeah, so, I mean, you, you kept yourself up front most of the night, and, you know, you battled with Justin Belmonte there at the end. Do you think, had you been able to clear him, do you think you would have been able to really, you know, challenge Matt there at the end? No. The car, I just was way too tight. Um, I, I should have made a, 
I should have went a different direction on the setup for the race. Our conditions were very different than what we practiced with last night. And, you know, I'm a little, I'm a little disappointed in myself, not making that call. Yeah, for sure. But, I mean, it's, it's always hit or miss at a track like this. You know, you never, you never know what you're going to get um, for sure. No, you don't. And you also, you got multiple, multiple lanes and now we're, you know, this track takes rubber on here and it changes. We also had a uh, hundred degree track surface tonight, which was different than we had all week, uh, different than we had in practice. And the, the track usage was high. So this, this place had a ton of rubber on it and it really was tight. It, the, the guys that were real free, had a, had a big advantage over us. Yeah, maybe we can uh, contact iRacing. Maybe we can get them in here and, you know, maybe put some, down some of that PJ1 and get some I, grip for sure. That would be uh, great. For that some of them guys. But uh, before we let you go, do you got anybody you want to shout out? Anyone you want to, you know, I'll, mention? I'll, always the guys over at BMP, man. We keep doing our thing. Um, I appreciate them a whole lot helping me, helping me out with stuff. Well, it's a good run for you for sure. Uh, finishing P3 and a, a night full of cautions and uh, congrats, man. Survival. I appreciate it. All right. And that was Jeffrey Taylor. And so now we are going to go ahead and go run through the race results. So, here we go. Race results. Matt Cox comes home as your winner. Justin Belmonte finishes second. Jeff Taylor comes home P3. Shane Davis comes home P4. Warren Young comes home P5. Blaine Wilson brings home six. Caden Norfrey brings home seventh. He picks up 18th spot. Chris Spear picks up one spot. He finishes eighth. Hunter Carmichael finishes ninth. Nicholas Atwood finishes tenth. Matt, take us from 11 to 20th, if you don't mind. Sure, not a problem, Alan. As he brought you through the top 10, coming home in that 11th place position, that's going to be the 19 of Nicholas Atwood. Uh, 12th belongs to the 15 of Alex Coffey. Coming home 13th, that's going to be the 33 of John Binder. You can also catch him on the SNN series uh, Sunday nights as well. 14th, that belongs to Nick King, who had some trouble uh, a few different times today, not the finish he was hoping for. Rounding out the top 15, uh, the 13 of Johnny Shade. Yeah, it is Shade, pardon me. The 16th. Tim Wartman Jr. in the 83 was strong early, not the finish he was looking for either. 17th, Randy Mullins in the 54, as always. 18th belongs to Dean Motley in that 22 ride. 19th, Jared Clark. And rounding out the top 20 tonight, Kyle Holden in the 59 ride. All right, as we move to the field. Jordan, we're going to put you on the spot again, and you can take us all the way to 30. So coming home in 21st is Nigel Christensen. Coming uh, coming in 22nd would be Jamison Middles Middlemiss. Aaron Matthews brings it home in 23rd. Ed Boyles Jr., rough night for him, definitely in a few cautions, uh, brings it home in 24th. Paul Gallimore, after a, a good strong start, brings it home in 25th. 26th is Paul Whitley. 27th, after leading a few laps, ends up in, in some more calamity, uh, Blaine Woodruff. Barry Sanders ends up in 28th. Chris Davis comes home in 29th. 30th would be Derek Pemberton. All right. 31st is Brandon Bikey. Jordan Schmitz is going to bring home 31st or 32nd. Excuse me. Chad Sullivan brings home 33rd. 34th, Chris James. Darren Mills brings it home 35th. Kenny Coppola brings it home 36th. And the man having an out-of-body experience, Matt Mettler, brings it home 37th. And Ryan Huff rounds out your 38th car field here at Bristol. Final thoughts as we close this one out. Well, gentlemen, I don't know about you guys. I don't think any of us predicted 
the way that this race would evolve tonight. I mean, just look at the end of this field tonight. You see some of the big names in the league. Kenny Coppola, Brandon Bikey, Bad Chad Sullivan. I mean, we would have all bet that probably there was a high probability one of those drivers would have been battling to win the race. Not the case here at Bristol tonight. Is I'm still in shock as I have to continue to ratchet my jaw back up off the floor after this uh, 300 laps here tonight. Well, I I know I came in late. Uh, it, it was an absolute pleasure to be able to to tag team with Matt and, and John and Jordan here and come in here and, and give John a much needed break from, you know, from his day job because he talks a lot during, during his day job. John, you have any final thoughts? You know, uh, just long race, tough race, um, very, very long race. Race time was somewhere around two hours and 15, two hours and 20 minutes. Not very many green flag laps, 20 plus cautions. A brutal race for drivers and for viewers and broadcasters, really. Bristol can be a tough time. I want to give kudos to those that stuck it out that continued watching the race and those drivers that stayed on track. And thanks to you guys for being in the booth as well. Um, we're gonna we'll close this one out, of course, and then we're gonna head off into uh, kind of been off into the sunset. I mean, I guess we could say as far as to the rest of the season, and and you know next week we're gonna be looking towards uh, Coda, uh, 46 laps at Coda, and Coda's a a fun track. I, I think that's gonna be a good one. So tuned in next week at 8 Eastern for Moonshiners uh, Cup Series at uh, Coda. Right, and if Jordan don't have anything, then John, I think we can close this one out. Yep, and not let uh, Matt have the honors. Folks, I want to thank you all again. Thanks for being here. Matt, go ahead. Well, first of all, I want to thank SRM again for the opportunity to relive some of my glory days here with the late, great Tony Trapasso. as him and I spent quite some time up here in the SRM booth, and now the named after him in his memory, but, like, guys, tonight, like we said, like, all good things must come to an end, including this broadcast. Want to thank all of the partners, the drivers, everyone that showed up here tonight in the YouTube chat. Without you guys, this cannot be successful. We thank each and every one of you. And I'll leave you guys with the late, great Tony Trapasso's closing. As you walk down the road of life this week, ladies and gentlemen, do us all a favor. Don't play in traffic. And we'll see you next time right here on SRM.